Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what it is. Less than 15 minutes late, it's been an improvement. See, it's not about perfection, it's about improvement. You just gotta keep making progress every day. And this is progress. You know what I'm saying? Welcome to another episode of Victory Talk. I'm gonna help you get that money, muscle, mindset. Matter of fact, let's get into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome. Welcome back to Victory Talk. We got a special guest today, man. We got a special guest today. But before that, we want to introduce our special guest, the man you all here to see. Uh, We got to do a word from our sponsors. Again, this episode of Victory Talk is sponsored by Thought Repellent. Keep the hose off you. Right. I know a lot of you guys look at how do I get girls? How do I get girls? If you was a real baller and or shot caller. You'd be your problem would be too many hoes. That's what the real ballers is doing. We just like, damn, it's too many fucking hoes, right? And how are you gonna how are you gonna stay away from the hoes? How are you gonna keep them off you? They'll ruin everything if you let them. You read the Bible, chapter one, <laughs> chapter one. <laughs> Bitches fucking shit up, man. <laughs> Talking to the fucking snake, and then got Adam sent ass to eat the apple, right? They'll do the same to you. <laughs> they'll do the same to you there's a lot of le- Moses they call Moses a prophet he was trying to teach us a lesson one don't let your girl be friends with other guys right she talking what the fuck she talking to stink for anyway bitch two <laughs> don't let bitches fuck your shit up because of that because of that hoe now we all gotta wear clothes and go to work right <laughs> don't let it happen to you thought repellent all your super chats go to the research and development for thought repellent it's only for the ballers most of you motherfuckers wanna know how to get girls if you was really balling, you'd be like, man, how do I what do I do with all these fucking hoes? How do I keep them off me? Right? Well, thought repellent is gonna help you with that. All your super chats go to research and development, but thought repellent. All right, we're gonna bring that to market. Hey, if you're like, damn, that's not my problem. Ho- hoes aren't chasing me down the street every time I go outside. Oh fuck, we need to start balling. That's why we got the victory unit discord. <laughs> Join the discord, free information. I got free courses in there about how to get money. Uh, improve your fitness and your mindset free courses in there uh, the best of which is the newest one baller mindset 100% free download it first, link, first link in the description it's the first link in the description it's the first link in the description all right now that we got those obligatory notes out the way without further ado you know the word legend gets thrown around a lot <laughs> but sometimes it's applicable all right I'd like to bring to the stage <laughs> my my homie. Listen, this guy, he can fight better than you. Probably got more money than you. Just bought a Lambo, right? He can sing country music better than you. I seen him do it. My man, Justin Waller. What up? What's up, man? What's going on, bro? Man, I'm I'm so glad I'm so glad. I'm so glad that we've unveiled the thought repellent. I know you've probably been doing yeah. it for a while, but I got four cases on back order. Yeah, listen right now. I know, man. Because, I know. Because when you when you can do it like this, man, you got to have at least four cases, man. You at run least. out, bro. I'm spraying the shit all day, bro. Yeah, you're running around Miami with yeah. the brand new Lambo. Yeah. It's yeah. sexy. You know what I'm saying? It's nice. You got w- one of your Rolexes yeah. right there. You, you got know, one on today. You know, like what 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 they what, what these chicks supposed to do when they see you, bro. man? You think they're not supposed to throw themselves at you? Bro, grab a mop, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's it. That's the game. What's going on, bro? Dude, today, uh, I just I've been working. I had I had a lunch meeting where I drank too much tequila. Yeah, and yeah. then I went and sparred after that. Mm. We, we got a coach in the war room. Shout out to Tig. Mm-hmm. He made me spar tipsy and he and he and he kind of shark tanked me a little bit. Yeah, he a threw, little bit. He threw Thomas in, then Pablo in. So I got a 21 year old and a 23 year old coming at Jesus. me. And I'm just tequila. <laughs> and then and then on top of that, he wouldn't let me punch. He's like all defense because he knew all I drank defense. and he was mad at me. Uh, so he gave me a jab right at the end. So for, yeah. for the last little bit, but I was ready to throw tequila up. Look at him, man. He'll fuck ready. you up drunk. 
I was ready. I was ready. <laughs> Ask the boys. Ask the boys, man. For sure. That's what's up, so, man. Yeah, man. Good day. Well, listen, bro. We've been, we've been friends for a while now, right? Yep. You know, I was on your podcast like years ago. What was it like a year ago? Yeah, year and like change. That. Yeah. And uh, we known each other. We got a lot of mutual friends. Yep. Uh, so I know you, but tell the people about you, man. Who 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 is Justin Wall? Man, so grew up in South Louisiana. Right. Started a steel company at twenty four. Mm. Uh, it was up and down, up and down until I made it. Used to watch Brandon Carter videos when he was in his kitchen. Come on, cussing at everybody. You know, talking about motherfucking protein and fuck this and fuck that. Well, how and, then you, and then you'd have like a random white bitch in like every other video. <laughs> and I'm like, I didn't have thought repellent. Dude. Yeah, you didn't have <laughs> thought repellent. So they would bro. just show up. You're like, you're like, you were like on your balcony yelling at people with some white bitch doing doing uh, handstand pushups and shit in New York. Listen, and I loved it. Yeah, I loved it. This is the thing, just I didn't even know that bitch. <laughs> I don't even know. I, don't, I didn't even know them bitches, man. They would just show up because we didn't have thought repellent back then. Yeah, hey, yeah. That's the game. We're, we're working on it. That's yeah. the game. So I built the business up, man. And uh, I decided to leave Louisiana. I own a little under 300 doors in real estate now. Come on, man. I got I got plenty of crypto. I, I do this thing online, which is really good. You know, it's mm-hmm. a really great business comparatively to the, the brick and mortar for sure. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and yeah, man. And then here we are. You know, after all them years watching you do push-ups with bitches. Come on. Yeah, well, how else? There's no wonder you got so big and strong. You oh, watching, yeah, bro. You grew up watching I, Brandon I, Carter yeah, videos. Bro, I had Brandon Carter videos. Like, listen here, motherfuckers. <laughs> what? How else is it supposed yeah, to turn bro, out? Yeah, it, it bro. Doesn't, it doesn't even work. I'm like, bro, this dude looks like a ninja turtle, bro. <laughs> so uh, I better get my ass in Anytime Fitness and, and try to be somebody someday. So Yeah. Yeah, man. So that's what I did, man. And, and here we are, man. I saw I live in Miami now. Yeah, uh, I'm building a house in Dubai. I'm really excited about that. Oh shit! Yeah, man, seven bedrooms, infinity pool, gym, private beach, right, right. across from Andrew and there, man. So I'm excited about that. And then you know I go home to Louisiana because that's where the businesses are and a lot of the apartment buildings and the mobile home parks. You're there pretty so, frequently. Yeah, I'm there a lot, man. Yeah, so I think there's a lot of lessons to learn from what you just said. I think, and the biggest one is, listen, if you watch Brandon Carter videos, <laughs> you'll end up <laughs> big, strong. Big Multiple strong. Rolexes, yeah, just big multi million dollar businesses, mm. houses in Dubai. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I, I listen mean, to Brandon Carter. Is, is that the success leads to show over? Success leads <laughs> clues. <laughs> so, you guys are on the right path. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what's up, man. Um, start at the beginning, Justin. Sure, man. Sure. Tell me about you were 24 years old. Yeah, I was How 24. Thirty-seven. Thirty-six. Twenty-four years old. What made you just say, "Man, I want to, I want to start a steel company"? I never heard a twenty-four-year-old say that, man. Where, where yeah. So from? when I was a kid, man, my stepdad used to do metal buildings for this company, and my mom had this way of doing this insurance deal where she would just burn the fucking house down. Okay. She did it twice. The first time she did it, we went and stayed with his boss. Okay. Now you understand, I'm from south louisiana mm-hmm. so we were living in like this shack slash mobile home kind of like pushed them together type deal on yeah, this piece of yeah, land yeah, yeah. well she burnt that shit to the ground yes she did right so we went and stayed at his boss's house and this is in like, like that wasn't like a figure of speech she no she burnt the fucker down. down bro all right in fact funny 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 enough you might still alive in the yeah room? yeah you, you might not be one in the Snitch on her. No, 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 cool, bro, bro. I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you That's something. I'm, I'm like, yeah. She ain't worried. She ain't worried, bro. Um, actually, the fire truck ran over our dog on the way down the driveway. <laughs> yeah, bro, crazy. Anyway, the point is, we went and stayed at this dude's house in Baton Rouge, and this dude had like a basketball court in his house. He mm-hmm. wasn't balling like people balling in Miami, but for Louisiana, yeah, man, like he was better than the trailer park. Yeah, and so I kind of like I caught a glimpse of that, right? Uh, and then in college. We were going to play Arkansas in football, mm-hmm. and it was a bus ride because from Monroe to like Fayetteville was not that far, so we didn't do it plain. Mm-hmm. And I read Rich Dad Poor Dad, uh, and my dyslexic ass had to read it like twice. How old were you at the time? Bro, I must have been 20, 21. Okay, yeah, yeah. maybe. And um, yeah, so I read that book. I knew I knew I wanted to have a business, but I thought I was going to graduate in construction management and like go to Dallas, right? Mm-hmm. And I'd have a job and do all this other shit. That's not really how it happened because I graduated in two thousand nine. Mm-hmm. So I graduated in 2009. There's no jobs. And so I ended up having to dig ditches for this company called Austin Bridge and Road before I went back to Baton Rouge. Okay. And I've told the story multiple times, so I'll make it kind of short. But basically, I went to this, this hospital job so many times, the boss finally decided to see me. Mm-hmm. And I thought he was going to get pissed at me. 
He ended up leaning back in his chair. He's like, bro, I love this shit. And he gave me a job. Well, what I did is I went to the bank and I said, hey, listen, to have a contractor's license, you have to have a net worth of $10,000 in Louisiana. Okay. I did not have that. So what I did is I went to the bank and I was like, listen, I'm making decent money. I was probably making like 60 grand a year. Mm -hmm. I auto drafted like 80, 90% of my check. I never oh, saw oh, it. Shit. And so after six months, like I had the money saved up mm -hmm. and I went and applied for my contractor's license and that'll be 14 years in March. Wow. That business. Yeah. And I should have went bankrupt so many times, man. I've had steel yeah. fall. I have a truck stolen. I've had guys accidentally set Airbnbs on fire, fighting in the hotels, <laughs> bro. We've had to rip roof off and replace them, man. It's dangerous work. Mm -hmm. I've had guys get electrocuted, just really? get too close to a power line, and they know better, but they don't listen. Mm. And you fuck around, like you know, end up in a hospital sitting next to one of your men. Like it's war out there, man. Construction, construction is a uh, very intense. Yeah. It's not an easy business, bro. I yeah. say all the time, man. I was like, man, if I'd have picked anything mm. else anything yeah you know i might have been better off but i think it made me who i am yeah and in a lot of ways um it was like a lot of internal growth because by the time i came to the internet space i was blessed to be acknowledged by guys like myron mm -hmm. walt you andrew because mm -hmm. i had a real business and i and a I real think, business like, yeah and, and it's not that it's not that the internet business is not yeah. a real thing mm -hmm. it's just that it's a different kind of level of respect that I feel like I was given very lucky to get yeah. just for like building real shit in the real Some world. You know? Yeah. It was real tangible. It's, it's nothing soft about it. I wasn't selling used cars. Like we we're building America, but like even still now, man. On, man, Costco's Walmart's rooms yeah. to go like big steel, big cranes. Like you could die. You yeah. know, you fuck up. Somebody's going to die. Yeah. You know, if you do the math wrong on a lift plan or whatever. So it was really cool for me to be accepted in the way I was accepted. Mm. And I think that's really helped with my, my growth on YouTube. But yeah, man, the business is 13 years old. It'll be 14 years old next that's year. That's fantastic. Man. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. So. Man. Congratulations. Now, what what made you go online? Like it seemed like it seemed like you came out of nowhere. You yeah, know what I'm saying? I get so that. Like, I get what, that. what was that transition like and what, what sparked it? You know, I joined a war room and I knew I'd always want to start a channel. When did you join the war room? I would say about a little over three years ago. Okay. I like joined 2020. 2020-ish, yeah, definitely okay. like a COVID type time. Oh, okay, yeah, beginning right. of COVID. Okay, maybe. okay. And uh, I had met Sterling Cooper, mm -hmm. and I knew obviously I knew about Andrew and Tristan and all these guys, and I and I wanted to start a channel. And I just think that's a part of being a life man. It's like, you know, you get paid for like what you do, mm -hmm. and then you get paid for what you know, mm -hmm. and then if you're really lucky, you get paid for who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, that and, was a bar. Yeah, yeah. And um, I knew that that opportunity was there. Mm. I always wanted to do YouTube. I used yeah. to watch your shit and be like, man, I want to do a YouTube channel, but yeah. I wouldn't let myself until like I was a multimillionaire. Got it. Because it wasn't because I thought that guys that didn't do it are like full of shit. Mm -hmm. It's just that I felt like I was full of shit because I want to talk about business. Oh, yeah. You, or, you or whatever. Walk the walk. Yeah, you got I had to be able to do it. And you, there's so many guys that like sell courses on how to make money and that's the only way they've ever made money mm. and i just i just had this thing in my head where i felt like uh imposter syndrome or there would be yeah. hypocrisy in it and so i i finally got to the place where i was ready to do that i was right about the time i joined the war room uh, and uh and from there it was just doing a bunch of collabs you know yeah that's what um, when i first saw you it was yeah it was, it was in during the pandemic time i was in new york and i would see you doing collabs with different people yeah. and you said some you, some things there was one video in particular we're, we're going to talk about that later but there was a video in particular it was gentleman game yeah and i was like yeah this is per this is exactly my philosophy right you know what i'm saying as far as as it pertains to the women yeah women yeah, yeah. acquisition yeah. of when pussy. you when you decide to put the repellent <laughs> down yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and absorb <laughs> And we was laughing about this shit before. Yeah. Because like I like guys will call me Simpson shit. I'm like, yeah, but dude, I get pussy. Come on, like, man. Come on, man. Like on, uh, being man. a simp is just a it, it, it's it's an exchange of value is, yeah. is indifferent. Exactly. Being a simp is like you're doing everything, she don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But being nice to a woman, yeah, or being able to have a conversation with her or think that she has a brain and and or even go as far as not thinking that every woman is a fucking retarded bitch. I know yeah. plenty of, of very very intelligent women and i gotta tell you bro it's attractive yeah no a smart woman is attractive i've dated chicks who were like yeah fucking scientists like real scientists, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. What I'm saying? like or like but um yeah like some of these guys in a in the red pill space not necessarily the 
many of the influencers, but like a lot of the people in the comments, the comments, it's like the they would call James Bond a, a simp. Exactly. Because he's not fucking exactly. Her yeah, yeah, yeah. You motherfuckers would call James Bond a simp. Exactly. You know? And then, anyway, they forget that about game though, because gentleman game is smooth. Well, hold on. I want to get in the gentleman game, but let's, let's stay on track with Please. the, with, the uh, Far away, with, with your ascension to stardom on the internet. <laughs> Proceed. What's the question? Yeah, so it, it was you. You left off at you wanted to. You wanted to wait until you actually accomplished something to go I did. online, and then you I started did. doing collabs. Yeah. yeah, and I started doing collabs. And when we very first started, I don't think I've told this story at all. I'm glad I'm giving this to you. And hey, let's do it. So, you know Thomas. Yeah. Right. Now, most people should know Thomas if they follow me, but Thomas is basically he was working for everybody in the Red Pill space. Mm -hmm. And I met Thomas, and Thomas. Is me, Thomas, and Tate sitting in Dubai, and Tate says something to, to Thomas about, bro, Jay's got the magic. You need to get on that. And mm -hmm. Thomas is like, you know what? I am. So he quit working for almost everybody that he was working for in the yeah, space yeah, yeah. and came to work for me only. He was working for some of, some of a my bunch, friends. A bunch. Yeah, yeah all of our friends, yeah, yeah. man. And, and so like that was, for me, I had to navigate that. And Thomas does what exactly just so the people may know? Thomas is basically the COO of everything I do online. Got it. He he's the head of all the teams, mm. a lot of the hiring. He's over Pablo and all, all yeah. the guys. So we have like 40 guys that work for us in this yeah. business. And so he's, 40 guys. Oh, yeah. But and just the Justin Waller. Just us. Yeah. Just our yeah. thing, man. Because yeah. like a lot of those are editors. Mm -hmm. But like we have big goals about content. Like, yeah. It's not like we don't really. I mean, followers are cool, but that's not the metric that we're measuring every day. Mm. I want to know how many videos are going out. How many channels? Yeah. are we starting, How many? Yeah. Like I'm trying to. Yeah, yeah, the shit you know, that you're in control yeah. of. You can't control yeah. how many people follow you, but you can can control how much content right. you put out. Right. So I'm controlling the things that create the results. I'm not looking at, you know, maybe the result itself. I talk, bro, I talk about that almost every fucking week. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like, look at the results and focus on those metrics. Yeah. And then the results will take care of themselves. Just don't look at the results. I'm sorry. Look at the actions that, that lead to the results. create the results. And if you just focus on those, because you can control those, you exactly. can't necessarily control the results. A thousand percent. And you just focus on those. Kind of like in the fitness world, it's just, listen, just focus on your macros and your training and your sleep. Right. If right. you do those things right every yeah. day, you pop you, up in that mirror, you're going to get the results. You don't yeah. have to look at it. But if you look at exactly. the results, then you can get discouraged. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the only thing you can focus on. People look at these downstream metrics that are often, oftentimes vanity metrics. Yeah, yeah. They don't even, I mean, like they matter, but they're not the reason you got there. You have to look at the root cause of what's going to cause you to get where you want to be. Exactly. And those are the things that you should measure every day. Yeah. I'm a big believer in measuring anything that should be measured is measured every day. That's a, that's a fact. Yeah. Man, you speak into the choir. Yeah. I talk about this shit every week. <laughs> and I'm super glad to hear someone else say that. Because that, that's all you can do is focus on what you are in control of. You're not in control of the results. You're not in control of other people's actions, the outside world, but you can definitely control your behavior and your yep. actions on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. I get a report every day from each business. Come on. And how I get to that is what I call the, the uh, private island test. Okay. Imagine you're sitting on the beach mm -hmm. with your girl drinking mojitos or whatever mm -hmm. the fuck. Mm -hmm. I'm drinking whiskey. Mm -hmm. And at the end of every day, the server brings you a piece of paper. Yeah. And he's got five to 15 statistics on that piece of paper. Yeah. And if you can read that piece of paper and know based off those statistics that your business is good, you get to stay another day. Mm. And so in my mind or in, in anybody that's listening's mind, they have to think to themselves, what would those five to 15 stats be? And then that's my daily report. Come for on. Each business. For each business. You got each one business. for each business. Oh, bro. Yeah. Dude, and they're long, man. They're long. And they and, and I get them every day. And so instead of me having to be in everybody's shit all the time, yeah. I'm just looking green, 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 red. Boom. Yeah. One phone call. Bam. What's up? So I manage, yeah. So yeah. I, I'm managing, you know, I have 200 employees in the construction. I got 40 in, in the online deal. We wow. got we got the real estate business. So mm -hmm. we have almost 300 doors there. Like we're just bam, 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 bam. But if you can, you can get big picture over the top of the whole thing yeah. and look, hey, in this sea of green, in mm -hmm. the sea of good, all these things are good, right? Mm -hmm. There's three red dots. Yeah. Let me just touch the people connected to those dots real quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and in those reports, you'll have, an, you know, you'll have an organizational board, right? Mm -hmm. And I have five roles and responsibilities for each person in the organizational board. Okay. 
And with those five roles and responsibilities, I think it's always important to put a statistical number mm. next to that. Okay. Because that's the subjective. It's not, I think they did yeah, a good job. Yeah. Either you made 20 calls or you didn't. Come on, man. Right? Mm-hmm. And that, that gives me what I like to call a throat to choke. Not literally, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but if if that red dot is going off in that system, yeah, in that report, I know exactly who to talk to, yeah, and find out what it is, see what's going on. And so then, then, then we get into fucking with the cogs of the business, you know. Oh, this is happening. This is happening. Oh, you're not making your phone calls because the pre-construction qualifications to get on the job is taking up all your time after you sell the job. Mm. We need to get you an assistant project manager to handle that so you can get back on the phone. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's those types of things. It's never, I say throat to choke, but it's not, it's not confrontational. It's more like, okay, well, what can I do to help grease this machine yeah. in a way that you can perform again and we can go to the next place? Yeah, yeah. You know, so those reports really speak to me every day. I like to listen to them, you know, and that's what Yeah, fuck, I hate to, fuck it. I'm gonna I'm gonna run run. No, ask him a super chat. Wow, wow. Ask him, hey, hey. All right, <laughs> let's just see what you got. Uh, hey guys, Jay Waller in here, hosting the Brandon Carter Victory Talk. I'm, What's I'm, up? I'm looking for question. Oh, okay, here. Cool. All right, Nav, five bucks. Question for Justin: How do I learn more from you about to how to run a construction contractor company? Yeah, so I don't I don't do a whole lot of content on construction. It's it's a it's a business that is really really not to disrespect anybody's courses because I know there's guys with construction courses out there, but the type of construction I do is it, there's something, man. You might even want to work for somebody for a while, man. It's 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 big boy shit, big MSAs, contracts, understanding insurance. I could do it, and and I would probably sell courses, but since I made the commitment to do it, I'm doing with Hustlers University in the War Room. I don't. Come on. Uh and uh, that's what you motherfuckers don't understand about life is sometimes there's a lot of gold and, and loyalty and commitment and brotherhood to people. But um, if I were you, I would read E-Myth for contractors. That's where I would start. Mm, the E-Myth. Yeah. And they have it for contractors. That's what's like. You know, I met Michael. Uh, no uh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah, a cool? big moment for me. Now nah, he's cool as fuck. He's old and shit. You know, Gerber. <laughs> Gerber. Yeah. You know, real quick, back to what, what would you, I want to show you something when you're talking about the metrics every day. Yeah. So I do that shit for my business and I also do it for my life. And this is something I've been trying to tell everybody. So I, I, I set up a, a tracker. Hold on, let me go back. Where I write down a few things, a few metrics that I know if I did yeah. these things every day, then I'd have a successful day. You should definitely have personal ones. Yeah. 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 So yeah. like this is my personal one. Just like, look, so you know what I'm talking about. This is for, the, I, I'm not showing a recent one because I got shit on there. I don't want people to see what I'm doing. All right. But this is like August of last year. Right. And it's like, I got to work out, meditate, AM, meditate in the PM. Uh, it's because I have bipolar and this keeps me on But track. you know, you know, it's funny as I've heard you say that before. I don't think you're bipolar. Uh, you know, you, 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 know, know. you don't know me well enough. You know. All right. Yeah, I, 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 more time around you, I got to track my macros, sleep like seven you lose hours. It? Do you like lose it bipolar? Or you nah, just... so people think it's like moment to moment, but it's not like that. It's, it's, you go through like phases that can last weeks or months like, like emotions that are inside yeah you? you can go like manic like real crazy feeling yourself like like you're on coke but like for a month <laughs> yeah yeah you don't sleep yeah. you know uh you feel like every idea is a great idea you kind of lose it but or it's not you're external super sad. well it's not external for me right because i feel like when i i've spent fuck bro we've gone to a bunch of basketball we spent some time together i yeah. feel like you're the same person every yeah. time i see you i'm kind i i've learned how to manage that and i think right. meditation has helped me a lot with that for sure you gotcha. know what I'm saying? and uh and so i just had to do these things every day the only one i didn't get this month was spanish right but look at the results i have a fucking percentage on each one so i know I that you can i can look at this shit and no nigga i'm on the podcast <laughs> <laughs> so I gotta look at this <laughs> nephew. So I gotta look at this shit, and I can I can see how close I am to accomplishing my goal, right? And all I gotta do is make every day a win, make every week. Then it makes every week a win, and that makes every fucking if I do that every month, right? Then I'm winning, right? Now if you look at this, you could just look at this. You could say, oh, do you think this guy's gonna be ripped if he's tracking his macros every day? If he's Working out 87% of the time, right? These are just like rest days or travel days. Right. 
you know, uh, mint.com. I track my, I track every dollar that's spent or made in my business and in my life every day. I, I categorize it. Right. How much when, time does it take you to fill this out? Um, this is five minutes. Nice. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just, or like I just do it. It's on my phone too. So I do it throughout. The, oh, got the workout in. Got the boom, 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 boom. Ain't no done. big deal. So is that on an app too? Yeah. So I, I set this up. So it's called Notion and I set up a habit tracker in there. Um, but yeah, if you do that, if you know what the fucking exactly the 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 the, the leading indicators, right? right? Then the lagging indicators is the goal or the result you're looking for. But that only shows what gets what happened, right? right. If somebody wins the championship or makes a bunch of money, they didn't do it that day. They exactly. did a bunch of shit over way a long period of time that, that led up to that, it. Yeah, and, and you got to track that shit. Yeah. Just like you're saying. So when yeah. you said that, I was like, "Yo, that's that's real shit." Yeah, it, it is, man. Like people people overlook the little things that make the great things happen a mm. lot. You know what I mean? And yeah, and I always say, like, even on the workouts, man. I'm like, I, I always tell these guys, man. I was like, have make sure you do shitty workouts because shitty workouts are the mortars. Between mm. the bricks that build the house. You mean like when you don't feel like, like it when you don't feel like day, it? Yeah, you still. Yeah, I right? fucking lie to myself. I'm going for ten minutes. A lot of times, what happens? You get a pump. Yeah, and you stay. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. the getting your ass in there and getting Bro. that blood flowing. You know, that's that's, that's like it's like those types of things, man. So like, I used to when I tracked my workouts really hard, I would use the Fibonacci series. Okay, and so check this out. This how this how I would judge how good of a workout week I had. So I would use in Fibonacci series that basically people can't really tell the difference between three and four, yeah. but they can tell the difference between, you know, one and five, five and nine, nine and 13. Okay. So the way I track my workouts, if I did a one, that means I just went in there and mm. kind of fucked around. You know, if I did a five, that means I did something. I caught maybe a little pump, but not much. A nine meant I know I killed it. Yeah. And a 13, the only way I could get a 13 is if I was sore. Uh yeah, so I used to track my shit like that, and then I'd count all the points at the end of the week and see how good I did. That's what's yeah, up. Yeah, Easy cool. when you have metrics though, and you like, yeah, it's like I look at it almost like gamifying discipline. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I turn it yeah. into these things I'm supposed to do every day that take discipline. But if you make it a game, yeah, and you can you have scores and you're trying to beat your high score, it's it's. It's it actually takes less discipline because you kind you of get wanted, excited about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you get excited like, discipline about means it. you know, kind of don't really want to do. You don't need discipline to do shit you want to do. You right. don't need discipline to, to get high or drunk, right? right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like exactly. you need, but so if you, it's like going. It's like you're able to skirt around discipline and not even have to use right. it because yep. now you've you're excited about it. Does that make sense? No, a thousand percent, man. No, yeah. I completely. So you know, one thing I'm interested to hear from you because. I'm hearing this right now, and I like the game of fine things. As yeah, well, but I also have heard you use the list of hate. Ah, the list of hate. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. question, Brandon. Yeah, is which one do you use more, and, and how and how does it come? Because sometimes I use these tricks in waves. Like yeah, one yeah. Thing one works here, one thing works there. So how how does that work for you? Well, it's like you know, they say if, if you if you got a hammer, every problem looks like a, a nail, nail, right? You know, <laughs> yeah, you, you construction guy. I've worked construction before, not. To the degree you have, but you know, just I need some money. Yeah, yeah, I call no, I get so, it. a contract. One of your multiple jobs. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You know, let me let me fucking paint some shit or yeah. whatever. And you need the whole toolbox. You, you don't show up with one tool because some days, some days it's Come not going to work for you. I'll tell you another one I use. Yeah. I like to daydream about the man I'm going to become. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like hate does not work for me very well. And if it does, it's like super short and fleeting. Yeah. Right. It's very short. I mean, not even really long enough to use it for like even a real task. Yeah, I might yeah. get mad for a second. It just it just doesn't help me as much. But bro, like thinking about like one day I'm gonna pull up with a bad bitch in a Lambo, Miami, mm. flip them the keys. Ever like, you know, like I'm sitting at lunch and like, dude, come on, to, I gotta leave the date to take pictures and you shit. You know what I'm saying? Big G shit. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So thinking about the man you're gonna become. There's two things. Where, so it's the list of hate is when you make a list of everybody. That's done you wrong, talk shit about yeah, you, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. motherfuckers make videos about you, whatever. Yeah. They on the list of hate. And every time you don't feel like doing what you want to do, look at that list and just yeah. know how happy they would be if you didn't accomplish yeah. your goals. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or or you know, sometimes I start my mornings off like that, depending on how I feel, right? But Initially, I would always you know, I'm glad you said that because that's actually not anger based as much as it is almost like a fear of loss. Like you know, exactly you, you know you can dunk on them. Exactly. Exactly. So, so because you know you can. 
I better fucking do it. Yeah, it's not necessarily. Yeah, yeah it's not. I don't feel that like that anger that anymore. Pain. Yeah, like maybe I did at one point, but now it's more like, all right, let me show yeah. these. <laughs> all right, <Yeah. laughs> you you, yeah. you don't know who you fucking with. Let me go ahead. And, let me yeah. let me show you exactly who I am. Right. You know who really didn't know who they were fucking with? Those old men sitting in front of us at that heat game when we was cussing. <laughs> <and raising. laughs> Bro, sorry to stop the podcast, but me and Brandon are at the heat game at the finals. Motherfuck this, motherfuck that. Mm. And these old wrinkly oh, ass man. white guys, bro, yeah. you could tell they own yachts, bro. Mm-hmm. You could just mm-hmm. tell, bro. Mm-hmm. These dudes are like old money ballers. And they're yeah. just like looking up at us like this. And like, <laughs> we're yeah. like, fuck these dudes, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, I was, yeah. I was, bro, it was a good time. It was a good time. We had a lot of fun that day. It the was. heat lost, but it was all good. Bro, they're just out, man, bro. Just out but man. listen. That's, that's in the past. Uh, so you list the hate. I can tell your meditation's working. Y'all. Yeah. Like, you come back. You come back. Then there's the list of great. It's kind of like what you said. So okay, you cool. make another list, right? Think about the man who's accomplished all the goals that you have, all your dreams, yeah. aspiration. And then you write out all the attributes that that man would have to have had, right? Like what, when does he wake up? What is he? Uh, how does he spend his time? Is he out? Is he getting high and jacking off all the time? Or is he mm-hmm. how much how often does he work? Does he keep his word? Shit like yeah. that. All the attributes. And go over that every day, too. So it's a list of hate and a list of great. And what happens is you start to reprogram your brain because Freud, Sigmund Freud said, people are always moving towards pleasure or away, away from, from pain. pain. Right. Yeah. Everything they do, yeah. right? So you have this pain. Right of like fuck, I don't want to let the haters win. <laughs> right, if, yeah. if these if these motherfuckers, if I don't accomplish the shit that they said I couldn't, they weren't hating on me. They were just right. right. Yeah, they were just they're just they're just correct. Truth, man. It was yeah. just a fair assessment. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My transgressions. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But and then you think about the man I want to be, the man I actually have to be to hit my goals. Every time I start acting congruence with that, I feel good. Yeah. Right, and then over time, it starts to train you into. To the point where you start to enjoy doing the things that it yeah. gets you close to go, and you start to feel bad about doing the shit that that it will take away from that. Like right. if I was to, I don't drink and I, I don't have no judgments on it, right? But like if I was to drink now, it would really, it would, I, I would feel you. bad about. It. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like, and I'm not saying anybody else. Should, I'm not trying to impose my morality on anyone else. Like I, one of the big reasons I don't drink or, or do any recreational drugs is the bipolar. Really? Yeah, it can trigger that shit. You know what I'm yeah, saying? That's interesting. Yeah, I yeah. It. So it's like it keeps me on point. Um, that's one of the reasons, right? But I digress. It's like if I was to do something that wasn't in line with the man I wanted to be, then I, I, I just, I, I wouldn't be feel like good a about sabotage it. too. It's almost like it doesn't, it doesn't take discipline for me yeah. now. Now it takes discipline for me not to. Right. But it, it takes. The list of hating lists that are great, what they do is they change my associations with pain and pleasure. So the things that used to bring me pleasure that were negative, now I look at them in disgust if I did it. Does that make sense? Right. No, I completely get it. So you know one thing I'm interested about, though? And this is something I've actually personally dealt with in my life. Mm -hmm. I think one of the most dangerous things that can happen to a man Mm -hmm. is for him to get to the top of a mountain. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like success is really a two way thing. Is that one part is climbing and doing the work. Yeah. The other part is finding a bigger fucking mountain. Yeah. So when it comes to, and I've had this happen to me in my life where I really had to stop and be like, bro, you need to get more consciousness. You know, Tell me and, more what you mean. And so, for example, it's like there was a time in my life where I was looking around, it's like, look in the mirror, six pack, mm-hmm. tall, handsome, style, bitches, money. I had everything that yeah. I ever could have thought I wanted when I was growing up in a trailer park in mm-hmm. Louisiana, right? There, I had nowhere else to go. So the only place I felt like I, you can go when you get there is like sabotage, sabotage mm-hmm. yourself back down so you can enjoy climbing again. Because yeah. I, I really believe that happiness is like when you feel like you're progressing, yeah, yeah. even if you've knocked yourself down just to progress again. So what are you doing for consciousness? Like, what do you do? Because I know, you look, you've been rich for a while, yeah. right? What are you doing to say, okay, well, that's not enough? Because the goal is to say that's not enough until the end, because when is enough enough never, right? Yeah. So, like, how are you finding your consciousness? Well, before I get into that, I like what you said about, you know, it's it's never enough, right? Oh. So people are like, well, when's it going to have enough? When are you going to quit? Yeah. I'm like, like, when does the fucking fruit stop? When does the tree yeah. stop bearing fruit? When it dies, yeah. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. I'm, I'm going to keep doing this shit yeah, I'll never indefinitely. Retire. Nah, yeah. man. You know, yeah. 
So I'm glad you said that because we're, we're, we're like minded in that regard. For me, man, I felt like that when, before I was even rich, right? Because I was just doing the best of my peer group, right? You know what I'm saying? Then I became friends with Ty Lopez. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, I get it, bro. And, that I get it. and then it was another friend, um, Owen Cook from uh, RSD, Real Social Dynamics. Yeah, I heard you talk about him bro, a lot, man. They was at, 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 at one like at, a big brother, yeah, that, yeah. Like he was like a big brother to me, right? And they was balling, man. Yeah, like legit, like balling, big balling. balling. Yeah. They was balling, balling yeah. more more than you think because they didn't. They weren't like flashy about it because yeah. that's not what they were selling. Yeah. Were Ty was balling, and he would have like fucking eight bitches in the bikini shooting basketball yeah. <laughs> in the Snapchat story, right? Like just random shit, but. I was like, oh, wait a minute, there's, there's, there's another level, yeah. right? So I think for me, it's you keep making friends who are doing, doing better, doing better. Yeah. And it's not like an envious thing. It's I, I'm happy when it happens because yeah. it gives me another goal to reach. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah, and, it gives you that other mountain to climb. And because when your friends do it, it feels real. When yeah. someone around you is doing yeah. it. Because you can touch them and they're human. Yeah. You know, like, bro, I'm friends with Tate. Yeah. He got some money, bro. Nah, he's doing you know, well. He's doing okay. I want to tell you something about that, man. I yeah. hope I hope Tate doesn't mind me uh, telling this story because I know Tate since like 2018, 2019. Yeah, it was pre-pandemic. You know, yeah. you know, we hung out once. I went. I showed up at the War Room event in Atlanta. Yeah. I flew in just to holler at him. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. uh, he seemed like it was before he was famous and that, yeah. right? And met uh, Tristan and everybody, right? And then you know, so it was one time. It was before the pandemic. He had just bought an iced out AP. Yeah. Right. It was like it was fucking AP. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. 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 And uh, and I was in my, I don't even think I had AP right there. I just had a Rolex. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I was super conservative with my money at the time. And I texted him, I'm like, yo, that watch is fucking crazy, man. And he was like, <laughs> and and then he DM'd me and he was like, man, I hope he doesn't mind me saying this. He was like, ah, fuck, I don't even want to say it. Never mind. <laughs> I know I built that shit up, but tell now me I later. About it. But he yeah. was like, um, Okay, I'll, I'll put it like this. What, what he said, let me know that this like he wasn't like he didn't have like way more money than me. You know what I'm saying? You know, he was just you know um, how do I put it? I can almost yeah tell you, I, because I know him so well. Yeah. I can almost tell you, Andrew believes, and I think he's right about this mm. in what he calls return on flex. Yeah, yeah. He's like, <laughs> he's like, I've never bought a car that didn't pay for itself. By me marketing the car, yeah, yeah. You know so this, I mean, is that like you got to show, you got to show, yeah. you got to, you got to sell the sizzle a little bit, yeah. right? And so anyway, he was telling me that that like, oh, like it's like, you know, he was like, Brandon, I don't have way more more money than you, bro. Like yeah. you can get one of these today, you know what I'm saying? And but then he blew up, and now he does have way more money than me, <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But when he blew up, I say that to say when he blew up, that inspired me because I had took a time off YouTube. Right, but but we're watching him, his rise. I was like, oh fuck, I, I should come back to YouTube. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like like I say, I say that to say, like your friends, when they do better than me, they inspire me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and they push and me not, not in way. the jealousy way. It's like, oh shit, he did it. Yep. Then that means it's possible that I can do it. Does that make sense? Right. Absolutely. I'll tell you yeah. another thing too, is like you want friends that want to see you winning, and you want friends that will pull you to win. And one thing that I think special about my friendship with Andrew and yeah. my friendship with you even mm -hmm. is that it's very rare, I feel, that a man can stand in my fire. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, is that I don't intimidate you or Andrew uh, with my successes or, or looks or status or whatever. And I like having friends like that. Like when I see you win, let's just use, for example, we're yeah. talking about your business, bro. bro. Mm -hmm. Shit, bro. That shit genuinely makes my heart happy, bro. Yeah. I, and I hope you double it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? No, you know feel, what I'm saying? I feel that like me. genuinely, man, because it's like I just love seeing my boys win. And and if you can get to that place as a person that you really like seeing your boys win, it'll it'll help you grow in in crazy ways. And I, and I'll tell fact. you why I'm saying this is that I was just in L.A. and I was talking to a friend of mine, and it's about the way you frame things, mm. and we were both like broke, broke, broke in our twenties. Mm -hmm. And he said, man, back then, all I could think about was just trying to get out of that fucking hell hole and get out the debt and blah, blah, blah. And I said, really, that's how you thought about it. And he said to me, he's like, yeah, man, like, how were you thinking about it? I said, bro, I was just really excited about the man I could become. Mm 
Mm. I wasn't worried about the cage. I was looking at where, yeah. how far I could fly. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so when I see my boys doing well and I can tangibly text you mm -hmm. yeah. or tangibly text him or whatever that may be, bro, it makes it real. It's an opportunity. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like that shit is real. Yeah. You know, you can, I can get there. I can do that with whoever it is or whatever the subject is. It could be muscles with you. It could be money with you. It could be something with one of them, you know, but like, if you look at it from the place of, you know, where you can go, yeah, you have a different relationship with struggle. Yeah. You know, there are times I miss being broke. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> I tell you why. I tell you why. Because I didn't have a safety net. I know you didn't either. Yeah. When are you ever going to feel more alive than when you know you don't have a safety net? Mm. I know. When you're building your story, right? Yeah. When you're sleeping on an air mattress, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, eating off a paper plate and it's just yeah. you. You know, um, before before everybody know knew who Brandon Carter was, right? Yeah, you just gotta go get it. You yeah, bro. And you got that unicorn. You're young. Mm -hmm. You got that unicorn blood in you. You got your back against the wall. It's this weird kind of uh, I don't say this this freedom, but also mixed in with fear and possibility yeah. and hope and passion. Mm -hmm. Man, like being twenty, being twenty something, and and starting a business and thinking, man, I'm gonna be somebody one day. Uh, you know. You know what's funny about that? What you're saying is 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 true. I think that feeling never le le left me because yeah. my dad. I said this before, Bro, but I, I know we've said, talked about this. But he made a bunch of money, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like at one point, and then he lost it all. Yeah. Right. He came went from being broke to balling, then broke again. Right. And you think that you think that's like stuck inside of you? It's like a yeah. Fear? It's like you can never. I I I I don't think there's a there is an amount of money. Where I will feel safe. <laughs> yeah. Bro, you know, I'm glad you say that because before I bought the Lamborghini, uh -huh. I could have bought the Lamborghini a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't allow myself because I wanted real estate to be able to pay for the Lamborghini. Yeah. Because even now, I'd say up there in my biggest fears in life uh, is being that guy that was rich one time. Bro. Yeah. 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 But I feel like your relationship was so different. Yeah, I'm a I'm a first generation. You saw it up close. Yeah, what a gift he gave you. No, no, it's beautiful. Right. It is a gift. It's beautiful because I because we was he was broke. Then I saw him get money. What when I by the time yeah. I, I was you were going to college, you were in Howard, I was in right? High school. Was, okay, because yeah, yeah. by the time I graduated, I got sent away to military school, and that's when he started to make money. He was yeah. broke until then, and it's uh, no, 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 no. He had a, a insurance claims business. So he right, just did you. sales. This motherfucker was an orphan. He didn't know his parents. You know what I'm saying? Like he GED, you know what I'm saying? Gang leader. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like straight up, real shit. And he, he he was like, man, he had a dream. And he worked on his shit for like 15 years straight with, without seeing results. Like most people yeah. can't do that. And then by the time I went to high school, I got sent away. He started to make some money. You know what I'm saying? And then he was making $3 million a year by the time I graduated high That's school. That's a lot of money, bro. Yeah, and especially in 20. In two thousand, yeah, the year two thousand. So adjusted for inflation, that's about eight million. Yeah, I was gonna say you know? nine, but yeah, 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 yeah. eight nine million. That's yeah, where you're around there, right? Like then he lost it all by the time I was out of college. So I didn't, ex I didn't really experience it, right? I, but I knew it happened. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the biggest gift from that was the lesson that like there's no amount of money you can't fuck up. <laughs> you know, that's one yeah. thing. So uh, you got to stay on point once you get it, right? right? Like that's why. Right. Like most of these motherfuckers, they would they would have the kind of money I have. They wouldn't be waking up at four thirty. No, you know what I'm they wouldn't be no. chilling. No. You know what I'm saying? But it's like I'm 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 still on it. You know what I'm saying? Right. For two reasons. One, because it's more about being the man. Like I, right. I want to be the fucking G, right? right? You know what I'm saying? And also, it's like, hey man, shit can go left. You know? Yeah. But quick. The, the, the most beautiful lesson was when he told when he told me I can be whatever I want. I fucking believed it. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, no, he did it. it, you know. But imagine if he was a fucking janitor or something, you know. Yeah. He said, "Man, you could be whatever you want." Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all had a good, right, y'all had a good relationship though. Previous. Oh, that was yeah. my dog. That was yeah, really he, my best friend. Yeah, yeah, y'all yeah, were tight. Yeah, man, that's crazy. You see, see, but like that's the lesson. So I think anybody who wants to have kids or has kids is like, you got to set the tone, mm -hmm. right? I never, I never really had like doubt that. You know, a lot of people struggle with doubt, self doubt. Yeah. Me neither. I never struggle with that. Me shit, neither. Man. I always, mm -hmm. bro, like in the humblest way possible, I always knew I had that shit. 
it must have you know been something from me that had to have come like, from I somewhere. Knew. Like your parent, you must have had to, like good parents or something, you know? I don't even know, man. Like it wasn't the best situation at home for me. I can't, I can't say I was ever close to one of my parents. I just feel like uh, I looked around and I just, it was just, just felt like you knew it. I just felt like I had it, you know? Me it came from my parents, man. Like yeah. I, I was super fortunate to have good parents, yeah. you know? And it's like, all y'all listen, if y'all want to have kids someday, man, like set the tone for them. What, what were saying? the things that you feel like they instilled in you that gave you an advantage? Work ethic. My mom used to wake me up at, when, when my dad was struggling, she used to wake me up at like five and walk me to walk me to preschool and then get on the sub and then get on the bus and go to work. And then she did it six days a week. She worked on Saturdays too. Yeah. So it was like the work ethic. And then my dad, I barely saw him when I was real little because he he lived with us and anything, but he was trying to make that work. He, 15 yeah. years to persistence. And that just talking kind of told me, man, yo, if a fucking orphan gang leader yeah. <laughs> from Southside Chicago can make some money with just hard work. No education, nothing, then fuck. Does it ever hit you how proud of you he is? He would have been 70, 82 yesterday. Yeah. 82. Yeah. Yeah. yeah happy birthday. Yeah. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. I, I think I, I think about that. You know, you know he's proud um, of you, bro. I went, I don't think about, you know, now that I got a son, mm -hmm. I don't even think of myself as a son no more. I think I just think you, about you, him. You looking at him, looking at yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. I know you're a dad too, right? So yeah. that's that's kind of like when I first when I saw the first Creed, like I cried in the movie theater because yeah. he his dad dead daddy and shit. Yeah. But now like I'm looking at myself, it's like it's flipped. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking, fuck, I, I'm I'm not gonna leave my son. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm right, I look right, at it right, like right. that. Now nah, I need to make sure I'm good and healthy and around. Right. From a, it's just a different perspective. What's that now. pressure like for you? Or is there a pressure? There's a lot of ways to fuck up a kid, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like that's yeah. one thing I know. Um, it's Man, I, I was so happy. I know you got girls, right? Yeah, you know yeah, saying? Yeah. So like, uh, don't don't take this the wrong way. <laughs> In fact, I have bro, a more respect for you because you have girls. So I, I, I get it, bro. Because like, what I'm about, because when I found out it was a, a a boy, I remember I was in Los Angeles. His mom called me, said, "I got the results. You want me to wait? You come here?" I was like, "No, you open that now <laughs> and bro, tell me what it." Exactly. And then, and then I was on, I was on fucking was it Sunset Boulevard or whatever, like right in um. I was right on in LA and then I, I ran out of CVS to hear it. And she said it was a boy and I got on my knees <laughs> on the street. But but not because boys are better than girls. It's because I knew what to do. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I knew exactly. Like with a girl, I'd be yeah. like, fuck. Yeah. I don't even know how to clean this motherfucker. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like man. I don't even know how to fucking clean this person, yeah. you know. But a boy, it was like, oh, it's like I had so mm -hmm. much confidence, like right. in, in my in my ability to do it, right? So I look at you, it's like, oh shit, you got, you might have to, I don't know what is that like, but you learn raising a raising girl, hey, man. You know? you know, obviously they're young, mm -hmm. but I just want to be that man they can never replace. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, yeah. like. Whoever tries to date my daughters, I feel sorry for those motherfuckers, bro. <laughs> I feel so sorry for those motherfuckers, bro. Yeah. They're going to come over to the house. It's going to be me. And be like, I got to live up to this dude. She's going to dump my ass in a week. This dude is a big G. Right. You know then she's going to meet the Uncle Brandon. You know, come on, and then man. And then Tristan and Andrew. Yeah. Bro, these, bro, just, bro, he better be on his shit. He got bro. a lot to live up to. Yeah. And so, like, I want, I want my daughters to be happy and be married and shit like that. But I just think they're going to have a hard time, bro. Yeah, because uh, yeah, because yeah, I mean, like, bro, like, I'm not like you know, daughters don't look at their their fathers in a sexual way, but in a lot of ways, they look at their father as like the standard. Yeah, that you're the standard. And my yeah. goal is to make that standard as high as fucking possible. Yeah, that's what you need like, to do. Like, they I can't. Think that's your like, job. They're gonna look at me and like, how am I gonna trump you? Yeah, you know, because <laughs> it's always it's always the dad hands off the daughter to the man, and normally you want that man to be a little bit better. One thing mm -hmm. I love is to meet a girlfriend's dad because mm. I shake that dude's hand. He sized me up. Yeah. You, you know that man thing. And he's yeah. like, You're fucking my daughter, but you know, touche. Yeah. You know, yeah, because yeah. like they know I ain't no fucking punk. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. and I always enjoy that moment. And I think about that moment for me, and I'm just like, I don't know who the fuck she thinks she's gonna bring. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I think that's good. You what know? about like raising them? Like, how how is bro, you know, it is because it's it's different. I think there'll be a pressure with a boy. Really? Yeah, and I'll tell you why. I felt the opposite, but tell me like a pressure, but like a um, like a motivation. Like mm. 
I was talking about raising kids on Fresh and Fit last night, like what my goals would be. Mm. And my overarching goals would be the same, but the, the micro goals inside of that would be so substantially different. Like I wouldn't let my kids play football. Like I've had six surgeries on this show. Yeah, shoulder. nah. But, I'm, I'm not but, either, man. But he would definitely he would definitely box and do jiu-jitsu. Yeah, play off, basketball. Off real, yeah, 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 yeah. Athletic sports. And, and basketball is way more physical than people give it credit for. Yeah, but it ain't but football. It ain't football. It ain't like and, and, and like rare to get a concussion and like get in basketball. What? I might not let them play any American sport. I might not even let them play that. If they want to play basketball, I'd yeah. Them. If they want to play football, I'd let them. But like they would do combat for sure. Yeah. Um, They would learn how to read financial reports. Early, Come on, early, man. Bro. Super My daughters are going to know. Yeah, you know, they got to. Yeah. And so, like, there are these things in the real world that I would just be pressing on geopolitics, yeah. you know, like they need to understand things. I want them to see things. So those are kind of all the same. But I feel like with a son, you have the pressure of creating like this alpha male, mm. you know, or, or even or even the ambition to create one. Yeah. You know, you can get excited. Like, that's my little project. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, little Jay, yeah. you know, we got to make that happen with the little girls. It's like. I can them. see that. You just I can them. see that. I, I see. I I understand. There's less. Yeah. I never thought about it like that. Yeah. I think with a son, I always thought he's gonna want to be like me, so I gotta be the best me. Yeah, so it, it puts more pressure to me on that. I think you have more pressure because yeah, to yeah. be it, like on some real shit. Superhero. Like he's made me a better person, right? And so I think about, I think about him modeling me. And like some of the decisions I make, I'm like, all right, is that what I want him to do? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I want him to, I want him to see me and and be like, oh, I want to be like that, like the superhero, right? right? And and all always, like physical, right. physically, yeah, all that shit, you know. So it's like I, I spend most of my time thinking about impressing a five year old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it's so important because what he's seeing from you right now is taking it in. Yeah, you know, those are the things that when when he's forty, he's gonna be proud of my dad. Yeah, you know, and and just like the lesson, like it was so deeply instilled. No, I'm, I'm gonna show you something, but keep talking. Like I said. It's so deeply instilled in you, the relationship or what you learn from your father that you're still pushing today, bro. Now he's not gonna need to see you lose it. He's just gonna see that you never quit. Yeah, and I think he'll get that dog. And yeah, and and that's the greatest gift you could ever give him. You know. Hundred so percent. I, I completely resonate with that. But you have to understand, from my perspective with the girls, man, it's like you just want to love them. Yeah, no, that makes a up, lot of sense. Kiss them, man. I pick my girls up, kiss them, bro, and then because my beard and shit, like, they'll get like little red marks. Their faces <laughs> all red, so everybody knows. Oh, Justin, you've been kissing on the girls. I'm like, man, shut up. That's my kids. That's my son. Yeah, I do what the hell I want. So, so yeah, man. It just, I mean, and they're beautiful, you know. Yeah. So uh, it's that's that's really it right now, you know. Fuck, I, I, this is a video I want to show you. Real quick. What is it? Uh, okay. So you said teaching them financial reports and yeah. everything. So my son, when he was, if I can find this video. So he they did a test in his school, like a standardized test. And he did, he ended up being like top 2% in math in the really? whole state. Like he can skip grades right now. It's just. <laughs> It's the behavior shit. <laughs> Is he bad? He's not bad, but every once in a while he fucks a kid up, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, wow. I'm like, bro, why, why'd you hit, why'd you fuck that kid up? He, he was like, oh man, he, he's moving his arms too fast. I'm like, what? I'm like, well, why'd you push your friend? He was his, moving his arms too fast. Yeah, it gets his lower. It's that deep. Yeah, it gets, it gets just frightening. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, all right, man. He's a handsome kid. <laughs> oh, thank you. But, um, Fuck! I wish I had the. Yeah, I didn't yeah, have the video on deck. It's badass so, right here. Look at him. But he, that's that Brandon Carter smile, right? There. <laughs> <laughs> but yo, anyway, I can't find a video. But what what we did was, since he that's not an accident though. Since he was two, like two years old, we would, I would throw flashcards on the floor, mm -hmm. and he would have to put them in order. You know what I'm saying? From one to a hundred. And we were doing it when he was two, like he would be with a diaper on. Right. Right. So when you say learning shit, I've been like trying to train him, reading to him all the time. So he can he can fucking read. Like he reads on the second grade level, you know, because we, we train him to do that shit. You know what I'm saying? The other day make him a G. The other day, uh, we were trying to get to dinner, but you had a FaceTime with him. Yeah, I was supposed to go to dinner with you. Yeah. Yeah. But, and so what do you what do you talk to him on FaceTime about? I mean, I just talk about school. Like maybe he's showing me some toys. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's five. Yeah. He might be 
show me a fucking we just like right now it's just playing but i try to incorporate mm-hmm. lessons in in the playing like he in he, there yeah because he read my because he can he can read like he's like what does relentless mean <laughs> by, the way, by the way relentless is my favorite word yeah yeah a thousand percent yeah bro Psst, come on man i knew yeah. we'd get along right he was like what does relentless mean it, was, it means you don't give up yeah. and he's like no matter what it, it was like I, i'm relentless i was like yeah you are <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so like I'm, I'm trying to like put shit into him that mm-hmm. maybe he'll he'll remember happened or like maybe even on a subconscious level because my dad used to like throw little gems at me and for example once he was like i was in college and we were just kicking it. He said, "Listen, Brandon, if you never want to grow, go broke. Save half your money. Every dollar you, you mm-hmm. get, save fifty cents." And he was like, "Is that what you do?" He's like, "Nah, I'm telling you because I fucked up." <laughs> and then I saw how that worked out, and I do that now. You, know what I'm you save fifty of it, you put it somewhere where it can I, make I put, money. I put, I, I use that money to make money, so I yeah. invest fifty percent of, safe, of safe. every dollar. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. That served me well. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that served me yeah. super well. Cause then yeah. now I got so much passive income. Like I bought this watch with passive income from yeah. like those those investments. Nice. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like little shit like that. I hope I impress on them. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. What, what's your plan with the money? The money? Yeah. Like what are you gonna do with the money? What you mean? Okay, so, <laughs> all, right, all right. All right. Like let's say you're seventy, right? Mm-hmm. And you're gonna keep working. I get that. Yeah. But like. The money is gonna outweigh the time. Yeah, you know how the the paradigm of time and money. Mm-hmm, like shit, mm-hmm. You know, are you going? Are you gonna like trust it off the generations? Are you gonna blow it? What are you gonna do? Um, have you thought about it? Yeah, I mean, I've thought about it, but then I haven't reached a conclusion. And I was like, you know, that's yeah. not a, it's not a, that's not that's that's a, that's a problem for future brands. <laughs> <laughs> I always say, man, it's like you get to choose your problems in life. Yeah, no matter whether you're doing well, you're doing not. And that's my kind of fucking problem. That's the kind of problem. You go, you what know, do like, I do with all this fucking money? Yeah, like fuck. You know, <laughs> do you have a you have a goal for that? No, I don't, man. You know what my main goal right now is being impenetrable. And what Talk I mean about it, what I mean by that is like layer on layer on layer on layer. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I really pay attention to how many income streams I have. Yeah, and how strong they are. Yeah, and so that's what I what I think about the most. Because I really shove all my money into these assets. Like mm-hmm. I flipped a quarter million dollars just the other day Come on. into one of these mobile home park deals. Mm-hmm. And so I don't I don't keep money. You know, yeah. money comes now. Don't get me wrong, I spend money. Yeah. But I'm I'm pushing so much, like big chunks of money into real estate. Yeah. Or or into crypto or into mm-hmm. like just just getting rid of it. Yeah. Like I don't want it. Like yeah. I don't look at my bank account and see and see the number of digits there and like get excited about it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, I need to I need to get this down. Yeah, you too I much. Need to, I need to put this somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like you gotta you gotta plant the seed because like w- what is gonna be on your time is gonna be it, it, what is on your side is time. Yeah, you know, like if I put this much money in a deal at 36, 37 years old, by the time I'm 56, bro, yeah, just that one deal. I think about that shit all the time. All yeah. the time, man. It's like, and it gives me peace of mind too. Yeah, you know, like I might go go to dinner and blow a blow a G, mm-hmm. you know, but I know. Every one of those properties, those people getting up and go to work for me and my future every day. Yeah. You know, and so that's in my head how how I look at it. You know, it's like how many layers, and I look at every property as just one more layer, one more layer, one more mm. layer. And so I feel, you know, like it's a fortress. Yeah. You know, it's like, and it, and people say this, and and I say this all the time, but there's a huge difference between being a rich guy and a wealthy guy because mm. wealth can't be destructed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like my, I want my shit where it's like, like I can't fuck it up. You know what I'm saying? Like I've been investing in like with Ed, Edward Jones since I was like 24. Also, okay, just 500 a month. I, I think you actually have a better play than me on this. But just as an example, it's like money I invest. I don't even think about it. it just drafts out my account. Mm. You know? Yeah. And it's like setting up those things where I don't even have to be disciplined. And we're talking about like yeah. ways around discipline. It's already coming out. What are, the, what are the steps that someone would have to take to make themselves financially indestructible? Right, where they're just right. where they're just impenetrable, resilient. Like, yeah. what steps would somebody need to take? Well, for me, my route was find a way to make money. Okay, you know, and then once you make money, so you can make money, keep it taxes, mm-hmm. and then make it grow. Right? Okay, which even in our situations, if you mm-hmm. look at it on the macro, we might have made money in different ways. Yeah, but we took the money we made, mm-hmm. 
tried our best not to pay taxes yeah. legally because yeah, yeah, yeah. I do pay taxes. That's why I moved to Florida. Man. Yeah, exa exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then you put that money in a vehicle that's going to make it grow and pay you forever. Yeah. You know, and and for me, that is my like macro strategy to make sure. Now, I do. I believe in businesses. Because business is like business is always going to give you a better return. Yeah, no, you it's like that's the thing, man. You, you know, can the whole passive income is it's kind it's of a small it's kind of like a myth, but like but when people yeah. talk about passive income, it's never going to outweigh what you can do earned income, especially yeah. if it's your yeah. business. You know, yeah. And 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 that's why I kind of in a lot of ways I don't I don't like to say the word passive income that much. Mm. Because I think that, like, when guys hear passive income, they think not working. Yeah, they think oh, I'm just gonna be on the beach, my yeah, time. chilling, you know chilling. Yeah. Even when I am on the beach, I'm on. Yeah, you know, the, bro, you know from the, the second I wake up, yeah, to the second I go down, mm -hmm. I am on something to do at work. Come on, man. You yeah, know, I'm on something to do at work. And I you have, love it though. You still, bro, that's how you enjoy life. Hell yeah! Like yeah. people, people think it's about money, man. It's not about money at all. Yeah, it's, about it's not game. about it's a money. game. It's about the game. That's what it's people game. don't get, bro. I would take my relationships with friends and family and like the like, bro. Money is nothing but just a fucking tool. Yeah, man. It's it, it's is 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 fuel to put on a fire of your life. It's, it's not, not even about that. It's not even the money. The money is just how you try to track it. Yeah, really. Yeah, like material things. Like, bro, fuck that Lambo. Yeah. Fuck that Lambo. I drive that bitch in the ocean, man. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Like my I have a good life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, good I, friends, good family. Yeah, you friend and freedom. Yeah. yeah. And freedom's way up there for me, man. Just my personality, man. Like, you know, like I never quit working. In fact, I always say that every day is Tuesday to me. Mm. And often I forget the day of the week. I always forget the day of the week. Yeah, bro. Because, <laughs> you, know you know, it don't fucking matter because I'm going to do matter. the same thing. Yeah. And I think that's where a lot of, a lot of guys should really focus is like, Sit down and write down if you could have a perfect day okay. that you'd want to live again and again and again, what would it look like? Uh, and then every day is Tuesday. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. uh, and, and, and maybe, maybe that switches up from time to time, like whatever city you're in, like, you know, like you like to go back to New York. I, have, I, I, I haven't go been back. in like a year, but yeah. it's, it's like most of my friends move. Right. <laughs> right. Everybody's gone, bro. Ghost yeah. town. But yeah. like for me, I just look at it and, and I'm like, okay, well, if I could do exactly what I wanted to do, yeah, what would I do? Well, one major thing is I would work, mm -hmm. but I would train. I would read some kind of content to make me feel like I'm growing because generally my yeah. happiness is around feeling like I'm getting smarter mm -hmm. in some way, and um, and and there and there might be a girl or two around. Yeah, you know? yeah, no, and if I can mix all of those things, if that's my formula for my circadian rhythm, mm -hmm. you know. And and I live that life. And I also think about what would I do if I had all the money in the world? Yeah. And that's a real way to do it, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. then because then you get to really what you want to do. Because yeah. some people, they would make their day, but they're making it based off of the fact that they had living an income. To really answer that question, you're like, what would I do if I had all the money in the world? I was still trying. Yeah. I would still put the the thought repellent down for just a second. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, it's like these things, yeah. these freedoms. I like to drive. You know how you meditate? Mm -hmm. I don't meditate, but I drive and I just think. With the, with the, with the radio off? Yeah. I used, to, yeah. Yo, I used to do that shit all the time. Yeah. Man. I used to drive with the radio off yeah. and I would get like my best ideas. I would, you get stuck in your thoughts mm -hmm. and, and in my mind, I play like chess with like, so if I do this, this will happen, but then this will happen. Okay, cool. So I'll do it like this and then I'll make that phone call and I'll be like, hey, move this here. Do this. Yeah. Tell him I said this. And they'll be like, Justin, you're making these decisions so fast. I've been I've been playing this move for three months. That's how you get the best ideas, yeah. man. Like, I mean, honestly, that's one of the that's the one thing I miss about not driving is those yeah. ideas. I'll get driving with the radio. off. Yeah. I'll yeah. tell you another thing. You talking about waking up at four in the morning. Mm -hmm. I feel like if you want to meet God, he's up at 4 a.m. Yeah. Man. And there's something special about the morning time watching it. What, Being able to watch the sunrise is so beautiful, mm -hmm. especially here over the ocean. It's like, but I'll tell you what it is, is that you can hear yourself think. Yeah. Because at that time of morning, the, the phone's not buzzing. There's nothing happening. You're quiet. You're in your own thoughts. Yeah. And I think that's really powerful. Like, whether it's God or your own conscious, it's your voice mm -hmm. at four in the morning. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, one thing that I used to wake up in my 20s, I woke up at four in the morning. Like for almost 10 straight years. In fact, that's when I listen to a lot of your shit. Oh, shit. Come yeah. On, man. Um, I would listen to YouTube videos in the morning mm -hmm. sometimes. And uh, it'd be on the way to the gym. 
And it was just time alone with myself yeah. and my thoughts and what I had to do and what I had to do about it. Yeah. And uh man, I think I think that's a real magic time a day. I think I think you know you're right, saying? man. There's something special about it, man. Like honestly. Yeah. And and it's, it especially if you can go outside or we'll see see it in the sunrise in the morning, it's yeah. it's super it's a good way to start the day, yep. man. Well, and they, yeah, and it's too is you feel like so much further ahead of other people. Bro, I'm 10 steps ahead, man. Yeah. Like if I showed you my calendar, uh, I don't know if I could do it. Bro, I actually want to say that you did show me your calendar once and I thought you were a psycho. <laughs> yeah, I, it's no no thinking I'm a psycho. <laughs> yeah, no, I actually think you're a psycho. I let am. Uh let me see how much I it is I can show. Uh I think there's some personal shit here, but uh, I, I'll go a few weeks out where I know this. Like, shit, this what, did, cool. what did you say to me, man? I think you said to me one time, it's like, man, if you could, if you see a man's calendar, you can see his future. If you, if you see a man's calendar, I can look at someone's calendar and tell their yeah. future. So you see me, man, boom, I'm up for, yeah, you can show it. It's cool. And then it's like, boom, meditation. Then it's practice. I'm, I'm working on some stuff that I got to get good at. So I got to practice time. Cold shower, shave, then morning walk in the morning. You just I'm putting everything there. on there. Yeah, I put everything. This fucking quick workout, eat, shower, do accounting, then I deep work, call mom. That's Sunday, man. Like, <laughs> that was uh, am I slacking? Sunday. <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> Is it slacking? <laughs> Whatever, G. A little bit. You know what, though? I don't count that shit, though, because you don't put that, all this. I, I don't put all the shit I do. I every put day. everything in there. Yeah, because yeah. I'm, you know what, man? And that's like, I'm a, I'm a psycho. I'm, you know what it is, man? I'm trying to squeeze as much success out of each day. Uh, you know what I think it is? What is that? You know how you're talking about, like, you think it's a game? I think that you want to make that calendar as colorful as possible. <laughs> and so you schedule shaving your balls in that fucking calendar. G. And I don't. I just shave my balls. There is some psychosis involved yeah. here. You know, it's also okay. I'm be honest with you, man. Like a lot of the shit I do is, I don't think I'm like the best at everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of people who are better than me at a lot yeah. of different things. You know, and they can get away with more than me. Right, I gotta be super on. I gotta be more on point. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm interested to know though. Then, yeah. then what your like? What is your superpower? Like, you know, God, mm -hmm. God gives every every character yeah. or every superhero has like one thing or another that he got. What What do you think you got? What's your What's your stuff? I can withstand more pain than most people. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah, it pain yeah. to you though? I don't even um, think it's pain to you. I think you get high off of knowing that other people are yeah, pussies. That's what it is. It's like it's yeah. like the I can maybe it ain't for you. I can put myself through <laughs> like we talked about on your podcast. Y'all yeah, yeah. should watch that if you can. Bro. Like, I get off on people saying, yeah. "Man, I could never do that." And I think right. to myself, "That's I, right." I, I think to myself, well, "Fucking course you can't do that." Motherfucker, motherfucker, why are you even comparing yourself to me, bitch? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you lucky that you even speaking to me. That's that is that is just a fraction of the shit I can do way better than you. Like this, I think this is genuinely <laughs> the, the only way to get Brandon to go bipolar is to bring this subject up. I'll never forget we're sitting on the couch. I'm like, I don't know that I don't feel like shit right now. The shit he's saying, of course, of course. But then I just say you can't oh, go keto and wake up at three in the morning. I can never but I've wake done that. I've done it. I've done it. You've done it. Sure. You, yeah, yeah. I've no, done you it. definitely could. Like I, I did. Uh, when people say, "Oh, I can, I can never yeah. not eat carbs," I'm like, "Motherfucker, that is, <laughs> that is one part of a yeah. long list of shit I do that you can you never can't do." do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let me show you my calendar. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like that's that's fucking psycho. Yeah. That's legit psycho, but I don't say that because I don't want to be asked. I just be like, yeah, man, you know, hey, man, it's not for everybody. You know what? You know what? I, <laughs> I, I genuinely think it is. I just think that you're getting high off a of positive momentum. Yeah, and that and that's such a real thing. Is like if you can get the ball going and some and, and get obsessed with being great. Yeah, it starts to become fun, and you start playing a game with yourself. Exactly. You're like, you know, like, oh, you're checking checking all these boxes off: money, fitness, style. All these different things, you know, where you live, like what you, what you're able to accomplish, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it starts to become fun. And you're like, okay, well, what the fuck else can I do? Yeah, I'm starting to believe in this motherfucker. Me, exactly. You know what I'm saying? And that's when it gets fun. I want to get into super chats in a minute, right? Yeah, do it. But you said 
you said something to me that really resonates to me. It's not about accomplishing the goal. No. You know what I'm saying? No. It's like we, 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 we touched on it earlier, but it's not about touching the goal. I mean, it's not about accomplishing the goal. You said it's about the man you become. Tell me more about percent. that. Tell me more about thousand that. thousand percent, man, because for me, I, I've said this on podcast before. I have a relationship with the older version of myself. Mm. I have this thing I keep on my phone called the rock and chair test. Okay. And what I'm doing is taking selfie videos and telling the old man that can't live anymore, that can't work anymore, that can't push anymore. He's just like, this is me at 90. This, I'm going to rewatch these. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, man, I'm buying this deal in Ohio. And I'm scared. I, they might be lying on what the rents are, boom, boom, boom. But I'm going to do it anyway because I'm going to get this good debt and I'm going to figure out a way to maneuver it or whatever. And so my main goal is to make the older version of myself proud of me <clears> now. <throat> because ultimately, if you think about it, people say, mm -hmm. who cares what anybody thinks? What about what you think? Yeah. So instead of me like calling my dad, like, and I appreciate like my dad being proud of me and shit yeah. like that. But what I really want to do yeah. is make me proud of me yeah. when I'm an old man and be like, and, and I look back at even the version of my 20 year old self now, and I'm really proud of that young man. Yeah. yeah. And so I feel like I'm constantly trying to make that old man proud of me and yeah. my actions. And so for me to not do something, especially something like, you know how, you know, you're supposed to do something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't let that go too long. Nah. I don't uh, let that go too long. You can't. Cause you, know? you start to hate yourself a little bit. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And yeah. You lose respect and yeah. all these other things. It's like, you, you have to find a way because I can't have that old man being like, hey, bro, you know, at 37, you're kind of being a pussy. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. Or whatever it was. So, um, yeah, I definitely have a, a relationship with myself on the way to the man I become because if you become the kind of man that you want to become, mm -hmm. all the money in the relationships and everything else will fall into place. Yeah. It's, it, it, those are just byproducts right. of it being really that guy. It really is. And you got to really just think all the time about being that guy. Is this the kind of man I am? Right. Right. Do I hit the snooze button? Is that the kind of motherfucking right. man I want to be? Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? When I when I don't feel like working or I want to stop, it's like, it, is that the kind of man I want to be to stop mm -hmm. as soon as something gets difficult? Of your Fucking Siri, we never talking to you, Siri. Never. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> no one's ever talking to Siri. All right. It's uh <laughs> it's 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 like I I I think about that all the time. And yeah. you're like one of the only other people I've heard say it. Maybe I've heard other people say something, but the way you articulate it, it resonates with me because yeah. that's who I want to, that's what it's about. Like the, all the other shit is just proof of it, Probably. right? The fucking watches and yeah. the, the fucking, the crib and millions yeah. of followers all over right. the yeah. internet, every social media. Fucking famous, <laughs> Brandon Carter, <laughs> you know, what Team saying? Keto. I, bro, I have people send me shit. Of me and you, they're like, bro, King Keto. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. cool. King Keto, gymnasium Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just like, it's just all that's just a result. <laughs> but of yeah, being the, the dude, it's like what so you say. fucking true. You, yeah. I, this will make sense to you. Mm -hmm. Have you ever hit a goal and kind of die inside a little bit? Uh because well, you because like you know like the fun part, right? Cause cause you got to make another goal. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's like graduating high school, like you're over it in a day. Yeah. You, you know, know what? I don't celebrate my goals for that reason. Yeah. Like when we got a million subscribers, I I I, I thanked I thanked my staff, right? I, right? I acknowledged them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think one of my mentors, Elliot Hulse, because he when I saw him do it, it felt real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, it was like we were talking about, about earlier. Yeah. yeah. Uh but I just went right back, you know, my shit. You know, when I hit a million you Instagram subscribers, my uh my my girl. She was like, oh, man, you, you had a million. I'm like, oh, is, is that right? <laughs> and I just went. I just went yeah, and it's like gym. that with money, too. Yeah, like, it's just I remember, like that. I remember the first time I, I realized I had a million dollars in the bank. Yeah. I've been looking down so long. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. the money was stacking. And I looked up one day and I had already passed it like a couple of days before. Yeah. And I was like, oh, be fucking damn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's just it's one of those things where it's like. Every now and then you look up and you see how far you climb, but all the happiness, man, is is with your head down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
you know what? If, if you always make it about becoming the man that you want to be, mm-hmm. then you never lose momentum. Because if you do it for the goal, right? When you accomplish the goal, you'll quit. You'll quit. You'll quit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying like, and yeah. that's the problem. If you were doing it just for the goal, then it it it's fleeting, right? Like you know, there's an ending. It's an ending. Yeah, yeah. You, and then you, you got like you said, you got to set a new goal. Yeah, I don't necessarily have to set a new goal because I wasn't doing it to hit that goal. Right. You get what I'm saying? Like I, I will set a new goal because we need benchmarks and we need right. uh, KPIs and we need you know to. We need metrics to, to understand that we're on this on the right path. That yeah. what I'm doing. But that's like a management thing. Those are just metrics. Yeah. Like the fucking the the money, they're just metrics that prove that prove that I'm that dude. Yeah. But being that dude is what it's about. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's why I, I, those metrics are really just a result. It's just results, bro. Yeah. And 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 that and that's so true, man. It's it's like working on who you are. It's like you know how we we're talking about before, like. Guy, like guys that like think women are trash. Mm-hmm. I think any dude that thinks women are trash is probably just a trash dude. Because hey. the women don't give me no trouble. Me neither, bro. It, it, I've never had an a adversarial relationship with women. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's not because the goal wasn't to sleep with her. The goal was to be the biggest fucking G I could. And for that reason, yeah. she wanted to get in my frame. I exactly. think you could take a woman, exactly, the same woman, mm-hmm. and have two men standing in front of her say the same line to her, let's yeah. say, and she'll get a completely different response based off the man. Yeah, they can be fucking twins. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, just, exactly. You know, you can feel yeah, the different bro, energy. Yeah, like there's times I could be like, man, I can't miss fish in a barrel. I call a girl a dickhead. And she's like, ha mm-hmm. you're funny. I'm like, yeah. all right, well. Yeah. It's, it's the man you are. And, I'm, and it's not just with women. It's just like, it's networking and all those other things. It's like the person that you are mm-hmm. is always going to outweigh because everybody's like, there's always going to be some dude with more money. There's yeah. always going to be like, some guy that's more jacked or whatever, but like I look at it like a, a creative player on NCAA. Yeah. It's like you got speed, field vision, like there's all these different things, man. I'm trying to get all my shit that and I might not be the best in all of them. Mm-hmm. But I meet guys all the time who have more money than me. But I'm like, bro, I wouldn't trade with that fucking dude. All the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Cause yeah. you're always gonna have that dude mm-hmm. that's got more money than you. Yeah, it's always or whatever. Somebody. And and I never look at it as like a, a one dimensional game. And I really don't even compare myself to other people very much. In fact, mm. I cannot think of the last time I compared myself to another man. Mm. In fact, I don't know if I've ever done it mm. because what I'm really doing is like looking back at this man. Yeah. And as long as I keep back looking at this man, then I ain't even got to fucking worry about anybody else. Yo, really? You just keep if it, listen, if you're if you're doing the things you're yeah. supposed to do every day to become the man you want to be, Bro. become the man, not and not have the things but actually become the that, man yeah, that who's person. capable of getting yeah. those things all the things that take it itself yeah it's like, easy i think that's another reason why i don't celebrate my accomplishments because it's like it was supposed to, in my brain right. it's like, you're supposed it, to do it it's supposed to happen yeah it I, would be weird this, if it didn't i said this when i paid my dad's house off we we're driving and he said are you excited and i said you know what it's like paying his house off it's like when you bench press 300 pounds for the first time mm-hmm. you've been doing all that working out mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. And you finally go on there and you put those two and a half on or whatever it is. And you finally hit it. And you're like, well, of course I paid my dad's house off. I've been doing all this work. Yeah. Of course I benched 300 pounds or 315 or whatever. I've been doing all this work. Yeah. I did 295 yesterday. You know what I'm saying? I did did this thing for my family yesterday. Of course I paid my dad's house off today. Yeah. You know, like I'm not, it's not like a surprise. I didn't win the lottery. Yeah. I just said, okay, you know. All right, I've been knowing I was going to do this. In fact, I've been planning to do this shit for six months. I just hadn't had had a second to do it. And I was like, oh, I got a free morning. I had a free three hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had three hours. I'm yeah. like, yo, call my stepmom up. I'm like, how much is it? It was like, it's like a little under 150. He yeah. had left. Bro, check. Boom, done. You know? Bro. And I just did that in a morning on a whim. I've been planning to do it. It's like one of them things I'm like, you know, like where they're like, you do things so sudden. I've been thinking about it. I just couldn't get, I just can't get, I couldn't get yeah. to it. And so I just did that shit. I'm like, I didn't even have it. Like the day before when I went to sleep, Mm -hmm. I didn't know I was going to do it the next day. Mm. I had a meeting cancel, like a Zoom call. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, bro, I got three hours. What am I going to do? Buy this house. (laughs) I'm about to just go pay my dad's house off. That's literally what I did. That's what's up. Yeah. And it's like, but like looking at the the thing, there was no real celebration. Yeah. It was just like, yeah, of course I did. Big G. Yeah, pay my dad's house off. Duh. You know Larry Fitzgerald. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so his grandfather 
and my dad were like good friends. No shit. Yeah, yeah. So I used to, I, I knew Larry growing up because they did. Really? They, they lived on the south side. Right, that dude's a stud. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know that Larry's grandfather told him this, but I know he spent a lot of time with him. Because, uh, but him and my dad were friends, so it stands to reason that they they had um, similar I, I, ideology. You just like, yo, man, you know, just kind of like act like you've been there before, man. Like you know what I'm saying? Like when you when you get some shit, it's like if it if like if you celebrate all crazy then that's a, if you're even compelled to celebrate like that right it's not like mm-hmm. restraint it's like if you're compelled to do it to celebrate like this and that crazy then you probably got lucky or you know something just happened but if you had really worked for it then it'd be like yeah. you would be super calm about it right so when you 100%. act all he he told us if you act all crazy you're kind of showing the real g's mm-hmm. that you're not really that guy <laughs> you I, know I what I'm saying? I completely agree. With Larry, you, man. every time he's in, I'm sorry, because in Larry, end zone. He, end zone, he just hand up, hand the ball to the ref. Yeah, this what, I, this what, I, this yeah. Is what I do, man. I catch yeah. footballs in the end zone, bro. Right. This is what I do. Duh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What the fuck else do you expect? It'd be exactly. weird if it didn't happen. Exactly. Like, it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's business as usual. Yeah, it's normal yeah. shit. Man. Like, I do this, do that, but duh. Yeah, yeah bro. And there's, but what I really like about that, too, is he's not putting scoring touchdowns on a pedestal. Exactly. If you sometimes if you put like getting up pretty girl or, or making a certain amount of money, you put that shit on a pedestal, mm. then then you've created like this this feedback loop in your mind that you had to do some extraordinary feat to get there. Mm. When really it's just like lightweight, it's normal. And, and and if you and if you feel like that, it's like it's easier to go get it. If it's this big thing that mm-hmm. they caught that you need to fucking throw yourself a party right. and, and have <laughs> fireworks right. after it, then it feels like a big. A big right. accomplishment, right? It, yeah. it, which means in your mind, it may seem harder. That's and that that is exactly exactly the point. like you're teaching your brain that this is difficult. That there's all this extra effort involved. Yeah, when you could just do it, you could just do it. You could just do it, and it's like, oh, duh. Larry was like, that. he would give the every like, yeah, give yeah. give the ball to Rick. Yeah, I, just, I do this shit, bro. <laughs> like, I mean, he wouldn't say nothing. He was he was calmer than yeah. me, right? And it's uh, this, it's weird, man. Okay, I talked about this. Long time ago, in old YouTube videos. It's like, but I don't even make noise in the gym. I don't struggle. I, oh, I, I, I try. I, I try. I, I try not to even make faces. Yeah. Because if I'm doing all this, then I'm telling myself it's it's hard, right? So it's like, even if it's difficult, right? Right. And definitely don't yell because I want to tell myself, no, I got this. Right. Go go approach it calm, calm my nervous system down. Yeah. Lift the fucking weights. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Percent. No, I don't yell in the gym either, man. Yeah. Because yeah. it's the same concept, I think, yeah, right? It's it like, is. This is not difficult. We're just going to go do this thing. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? Because, uh, look, man, you know, just how they say you can you can raise your mood by smiling. Yeah. You can also, mm-hmm. you make that face, and then you're, you're, like, telling your body and your brain, you're, you're sending that signal back that, like, this is struggle. Yeah. And the more that it's struggling in your mind, the, the less that your brain is going to want you to go. So I'm, I'm completely about that. Who do you want to go with you, right? Like, there's a... Fucking war or something or a battle. Like uh-huh. you don't go to battle. You want the guy yelling, yeah, let's fuck them up. Let's go, let's go. Or do you want the guy just loading the weapons? Yeah. yeah. Go over there. We're gonna handle this. Yep. <laughs> like, yep. Yep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like who, who do you want? <laughs> I want the calm motherfucker, yeah, I, right? I, yeah, you gotta have calm people under chaos, man. Yeah. And, and I honestly truly did like the reverse engineer the question I asked you, I think one of my greatest strengths is good. I'm really good in chaos. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Same. No, no, I I, I yeah. You got to be. You got to be calm. You got to be. And, and the way I look at it is, is even if I could be nervous about it, it doesn't pay me to be nervous. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't even serve me to put whatever on a pedestal of the pressure of it. You yeah. know, it, do, it doesn't even help. It just and, gives jitters. And you're a leader. So right. pe- everyone's looking at you. Yeah. Like, for example, every time I'm on a plane, right? And I take like 100 flights a year, right? So- if it's just like if the turbulence is crazy, I look at the plane waitress, flight attendant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I call them plane waitresses. I, I think it's a better, I think it's more accurate, but it's cool. No disrespect. Anyway, I look at the plane waitress <laughs> to see if she's calm. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? And if she's calm, then it's like, oh, this must be business as usual. Maybe yeah. I'm tripping. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Once though, I was on the way to London and I, I'm doing that and it's going crazy. Uh-huh. I look at the plane waitress. She drops to the floor and tells the other one, get that on. And then she drops the floor. I'm like, oh, no, fuck. shit. I was like, oh, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, like I, say this. That, I say that to say, 
you got to be even more calm when you the leader or if you want to be a leader one day right if you can't control your emotions imagine i something's going wrong and you freak mm-hmm. out but what kind of confidence is that instilling your followers you know what i'm saying right and on top of that it's like if you're the captain of that ship and you start acting like the ship is going to sink come on man they are going to jump off the ship come on it's true come on they're going to jump true. ship yeah. they're going to jump off the ship because you're supposed to be leading them and you're freaking out. Yeah. And they got to jump off and find somebody they can lead because they're trying to survive. Yeah. And, and human humans, I don't really think that humans like purposely do bad shit or like sell people. I think they get desperate and scared. Yeah. And if you are in a leadership position and people are looking at you and they're looking at you to be the, the person like pointing the North Star, mm-hmm. it doesn't fucking matter how you feel inside anyway. Yeah. And it certainly doesn't serve you to outwardly project it because you're telling those people, leave me. Yeah. Right? Like <laughs> leave this ship. Or, you know what I'm saying? And it's just, it'll never serve you, man. So that's why like people talk about how important stoicism is, mm-hmm. how important it is. I, I like to believe that I, I'm also a playmaker. So if there's anything going on, there's no problem I can't solve no matter what. Yeah. And, and that's on a macro and micro mm. just on the day to day. Because when people can trust to let go, man, you can get the most out of them. Yeah, and if they're know? calm, right? You yeah, know, if they're not stressed out. If yeah, they're, if they're, okay, then they, right. they'll perform better. You yeah, gotta, you got to instill that. And I believe as a leader, you should expect and allow people to be normal humans. Yeah, you know, because when you take that responsibility of okay, these people are normal. Mm-hmm. I'm superhuman, yeah. right? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like yeah, I'm yeah. okay yeah. with them being normal because mm-hmm. I know who I am the man you become right yeah and so like you can lean into that leadership it's like yeah of course they'll be a little bit weaker than me i'm the one that's supposed to be leading ship anyway you know what you know, i was it's empowering for yourself what i say to myself or like if i'm talking to somebody and they said talking about some people flipping out or something i'll be like listen listen thor doesn't get mad because other people can't lift the hammer mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah. <laughs> like yeah, that's actually what him, his ability to lift the hammer is what makes him special right, right. You can lift the hammer. You don't fucking be mad at them because they can't. Right. You're know saying your job is to lead them, show them what's possible. A thousand percent, you know man. And then you can, you really empower yourself that way, and you can give yourself all kinds of like you put spells on yourself mm-hmm. to be great. You know, I've heard people say, "I say shit to myself that might not even be true." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't serve me not to believe it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Just objectively, like. I'm the best man in the world. Like I'm the baddest fucker on the planet mm. might not be true, mm. but believing it is powerful. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Not, not like in a psychopath way or a very arrogant way, but like to really have that deep faith in yourself and the watching the way you talk to yourself. Yeah. You got to watch the way you talk. To yourself. Bro, That's super important. It's one of the biggest things. It, tell, tell me why, why is the way you talk to yourself so important? Because I do believe you can put spells on yourself like the 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 voices in your head. I believe you have two voices in your head. You have a grown ass man voice and you have a little bitch voice. Hmm. Right. And the goal for me is to make the grown ass man voice so loud that it suffocates yeah. the smaller voice. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like I think I, there's a quote out there somewhere. It's like you can believe in yourself so much that you starve the doubt or suffocate it. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I. I believe in like being very disciplined in my mind about the words I say to myself and the thoughts that I have for myself and what I can do, what I can't do, what I'm going to become and and who I'm going to be. Mm. And I would advise any young man to like really just take an audit, like a self audit of the thoughts that you have, particularly around, like, around who you are. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's a hundred percent, man. Like I don't, I take it to, to a super extreme. I think we talked about this at the best one. Um, for example, I won't say I'm hungry. I say I need to find something to eat. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I won't. I won't say, "Oh man, I need more money," or I don't have. An, I won't say I don't need that. I won't say I don't have enough money. I'll say I. I'm looking for ways to get more money. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I can't stop eating. It's like no, no. I need to find. I need to find a way to stop eating that 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 kind of food. Yeah. Right? They're they're both the same things, but one of them sounds like a fucking punk. Who's giving up, throwing in the towel? The other yeah. one sounds like a guy who's like ready, yeah, ready. to go on a mission. You ready, yeah. It, I'm super. I'm super um, strict on that with myself and the people around me. Like if somebody says something, 
I immediately say, listen, I don't say nothing about yourself that you don't want to become true. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you got to be super careful and I correct them. Yo, I don't I don't let people say try around me. Like <laughs> some one of my students said, All right, yeah, man. So I'm trying to get more leads. I said, You you doing what? <laughs> he said, I'm trying to you fucking try, baby. Yeah. Say try one more time. I fucking dare you. And then, <laughs> and then <laughs> oh, 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 I'm, in, I'm in the process of uh no, he said, no, what you need to be saying is hey, I need to figure out how to get more leads, right? right. Or I need to, you know what I'm saying? Or like I'm currently figuring out. Yeah, I yeah. like to put something in I'm, action. I'm too. working, yeah. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm working on a plan, or can you help me find a plan? Right. Like because right. it, it's okay to ask for help, but it's not okay to throw in the town. Like, so I don't even say trying because that that it, it implies that there's failure. There could there. be failure there. Yeah, right. like don't don't do that. You don't have to do that. You say yeah. You can figure it out. You're human. You know what I'm saying? Like you're you're a capable human. You're not trying to. You're not talking about building space. You're not talking about rocket science. Yeah. You're talking about regular shit, most even likely. If you were, yeah, even if you were, yeah. man, like yo, there might be a, there's a there's a way. So you got to super. You got to really be strict about like your yeah. language. Like I always frame things on where I'm where where I want to go. I don't let nobody say try. Fucking you, fucking try, baby. <laughs> I be blacking out on people. You know, what, <laughs> you know what I use every day because there's always that small talk like, how are you today? Mm. I always say, I look them dead in the eye and say, I can't have a bad day. Mm. It's a spell on me. Yeah. But also, I feel like probably eight or nine times out of ten, they understand what I'm doing. Mm. And so I feel like I've given them that thing. Like the like like a virus of like positive energy in them. Yeah, I told her there was this girl in the elevator with me yesterday. She's a security guard, mm-hmm. young girl, and she said, "How's your day going?" I was like, "I can't have a bad day," and I say it to him in a way <laughs> where it's like I'm dropping this on you. Yeah, right. And I love to see people's response because I know that I'm living by that mantra that it's not even possible for me to have a bad mm-hmm, day. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I just gave that young lady a gift. Yeah. You know, and it's like it's like you're spreading it. And so I really I really enjoy that little trick in my day because um, it's almost like gratitude, too. So yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's good. That's what's up. Man. Yeah. I'll tell you another thing I really like to do. I don't know if you do this or not, but like every day I do some like nice shit for somebody that don't even know who the fuck I am. Mm. You know? Yeah. You just do like I'll, I'll either over tip or I like yesterday I was in line at Starbucks and I just bought everybody in line coffee. Really? Yeah, and I did. I'm selfish because I really. It's not because I'm like this good dude. I did yeah. this shit for me, man. Yeah, because it helps you. Because like I'm like, okay, I did that, and in my soul, bro, I feel like I got good shit coming to me. Yeah, and I know that's you do. A, and, you do. yeah, and that's a small price to pay because energy's real on a human. You mm-hmm. know, like I know I have good things coming to me, and I'm I like I like just every day just like do some just random ass nice shit for somebody. Yeah, and I'm like, yes, that was nice for them that I did it. But it was really for me, you know what I'm saying? Like I feel like I'm sucking in all the all the good energy from the world, you know. Dude, that's a fact. I do. I do yeah. some. I don't. It's, it's a little different. Like everyone I meet or everyone I talk to, like I I, I try to raise their energy, yeah. raise their mood. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's selfish because I know that moods are contagious. Kind mm-hmm. of like when a kid, a happy yeah. kid, walks in the room, everyone lights up or yeah, you puffy, can feel it, or somebody comes in all fucking pissed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then that changes the mood. So like my job. Everywhere I go, it's to raise the mood. I'm fucking slapping high fives with the bitch yeah. at CVS. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I do this Wait, shit. Yeah, I love it. You know like, what I'm saying? What's up, girl? Like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, you might have seen it in the lobby, man. You know what I'm saying? I said, there's a bunch of people, the fucking security guards. I gave them all fucking gifts on Christmas, $100 gift cards. So, like, yeah. everybody works in the building. But it's not even about giving them things. It's like lifting their energy, with my yeah. presence. But right. I do it for me because yep. they feel better. And then... It's more selfish than it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's why, I, yeah, I always say it's like I'm not a nice guy, but it, I really enjoy doing nice shit for people. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it is, it, it's both good for them and selfish at the same time. Everyone wins. Yeah. Cause I, you know what? I can't stand like a, like a virtue signaling type person. Yeah. And so I'm like really, really anal about being like, yeah, I did that nice shit, but I'm still a dick. I did it for me. Yeah. yeah. Fuck these people. Yeah. I just want to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a hundred dollar gift card. I'm not doing this cause I'm nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yo, hold on. Cause I just hate hypocrisy, bro. No, I get you it. know what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't want to be, you know, cause yeah. then, then you start moving into the fucking realm of 
of your of motherfuckers holier now or you yeah bitches collecting crystals people, burning yeah. sage you know yeah. what i'm saying asking you what time of day you were born yeah. yo i think there's some super chats i think people wanted to ask you some questions just now. cool <laughs> yeah we got some super chats uh actually we got one from uh, Blackjack Master. Oh, the homie Blackjack Master. You want to get to that first? Or, the, uh, or give me a red. second, because that might take a minute, because I know how I know how Blackjack He come on every week. Let's get to it first. It was a lot of money, so let me see if I can. Oh, right. <laughs> Listen, money is <laughs> way to my heart. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> and he actually donated this, so, like, even before the show started. Oh, shit. So Sounds like Blackjack Master. Yeah, okay. So he says, I live in Miami, and mm -hmm. I have 110K in a savings account, 4.5% mm -hmm. APR. I make 15k to 20k profit a month with my business and 6k with my day job. If you were me, what would you do in the next 12 months to move closer to financial freedom? My girlfriend and I don't have kids or own a home. Listen, I got some ideas, but I'd like to hear how would you how would you tackle Blackjack Mastery situation? He's a friend of the show. He shows up every week. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. I, I, I... so. It... I would put money in any kind of vehicle that is an asset. Yeah. And what is really getting my attention about this particular question is the last word. A home is not an asset. And so I just want to be really clear about yeah. that. There's a difference between an asset and a liability. A home is actually a liability. The world will tell you it's an asset, but it's not an asset unless it's producing cash flow. Unless it's producing cash flow. Yeah. yeah it's rich dad poor dad. I read yeah, this. Yeah, absolutely. It, changed, absolutely. it changed everything. And that comes to your girl as well. Come on. If if your girl is not producing at least an atmosphere that makes you perform better or make more money, she's not an asset. She's a liability. Hundred percent. You know, like I don't have to worry about no domestic shit here because no. my girl, right? And sure, I could hire people. Like we, she doesn't do all the cleaning, but she hires the people. She manages. It. She manages. Yeah, it. You got to manage that house. process. Yeah, this, this place is pretty big, right? Yeah. So it's like you got we got motherfuckers cleaning windows, cleaning all the other shit. Like you got to manage those people. Yeah, and dealing with all the vendors, the sending the you know the vehicles, the, manages all, all that, that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it'll be like, like she'll remind me, hey, you got to you got to you know remember your FaceTime on your son today. Is that in your calendar? You know what I'm saying? Like she met she clears the path for me to make more money right. because my my my. Mental bandwidth is so much clearer. I don't have to worry right. about none of the domestic none shit. None of the dumb shit. What's yeah. what's for dinner? None of everything's Clothes. everything's taken care of. Everything's yeah. taken care of. Yeah, she's, she's the percent. shit. Yeah. One thing also I see about this question is that if his business is making that kind of money, yeah. and a day job is making six yeah. k, yeah. then what can you invest back into your main business to double it so yeah. you can get rid of that day job? Yeah. Because your biggest asset that I see in this whole equation is that. 15 to 20k profit a month in your business yeah you know what i'm saying yeah and so yo blackjack i would like you to do a, a time audit right so it's early in this month so you can do it right you know start tracking the time you spend on your on your business you can get an app or something to track how much time you spend working on your business right and then track how much time you spend at your day job and then divide <laughs> do some division mm -hmm. find out what your hourly rate is for your business versus your day job, you might be actually losing money. You might need to quit. You know what I'm saying? He might be losing money. And then if, if that's the case, when you quit, you don't want to be reckless, right? Um, what? Listen, I would like your your thoughts on this. But I what would, I what I ahead. did is I I waited till I had six months of living expenses saved, just in case shit went left, and then and my business was making more than my regular job. You're already doing that. Yeah. So six months of of, of living expenses, if shit goes bad. I always say don't leave your job until you have twice as much profit mm. on the table. Yeah. So I'll give you an example. If if you make a hundred grand a year, my business or whatever I'm gonna leave for needs to make me two hundred. Mm. I need to be able to double it before I jump. Yeah. Right. And what'll probably happen is because this is the way business is, is like you think you're gonna make two hundred, but you're gonna end up making one fifty, one seventy five, something gonna fall yeah. through. But you're so fucking safe, yeah. You know, you gotta we're leaving. Yeah. yeah, you have that pad, and so like six months of savings. But I like I like it to be that the business is going to produce it because I don't worry about making a hundred grand. I worry about creating a, sh a machine that's going to spit me out a hundred grand a month. I'm yeah. so risk risk averse. Like people yeah. that I to this day I keep six months of savings. 
in just like a fucking high yield savings account. I'm not saying don't do that. Yeah, no, I'm, not I'm just talking about either. his, this, his this situation with leaving the job. Hey, man, there's, there's way more than one way to fuck a cat, man. Yeah. Kill a if cat. You're into fucking Skin cats. a cat. Whatever. Whatever. You from down south, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying. Bro, I've probably seen a guy fuck a cat. <laughs> <laughs> There's more than one way to get a cat to suck your dick. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what? Oh, that's uh, that would be uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, man, don't knock it to you. <laughs> you say, uh, you know, you say some real white trash shit right now. <laughs> some real trailer park shit's coming out your mouth, Brandon. <laughs> What's Tessa talking about? <laughs> Tessa. Tessa donated five bucks. Hey. Thought repellent. Uh, says, Sorry, I know that. that, that <laughs> super normal. <laughs> <laughs> After a year of consistent deep work in your respective businesses, what did you notice about the way you've grown and the growth around you? That's a broad kind That's of... That's a broad question, man. How you want to how you, how you attack this, <laughs> Justin? <laughs> it, it is broad. You can go so, anywhere. So I'll just I'll just go with the key part of the question, which is deep work. That's a very good book, by the way. Bro, it's oh like, yeah, yeah. I gotta I get like some of my favorite books are the ones that are on display. You know what I'm saying? None of this is not up there because I lost my physical copy. Yet. I fucked it up. But uh that should change yeah, shit. Cal, Cal Newport's cool, man. That changed shit for Yeah, deep deep work's really important. I, I heard somebody say the other day, I'm gonna read this. He said uh if you were to stop everything you're doing mm-hmm. and isolate yourself for six months, most of the biggest problems in your mm-hmm. life would be handled by the time you got done. Come on, man. Yeah. So you, what, what, does that, what did that mean to you? To me, it was like anything that's on my mind that like keeps coming up. If I, if I were to stop what I was doing and just isolate. Mm-hmm. And that's always been the case for me. I feel like a lot of the, the success in my life have come from when I would leave work and go home and I'd still be alone. You know what I'm saying? Because I could really think about it then. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't negative at all. It's actually a lot of, a lot, it's like 4 a.m. Yeah. You're in deep work. And then most of the times that's what you can control is your bookends. Yeah. The bookend of your day. So um, I think that just doing deep work is is what I would want to emphasize about this particular question, man, because all the growth is going to come when it's just you and your thoughts and like really thinking about because you have all the answers inside of you. Mm-hmm. Can you quiet the world enough to hear your voice? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You So you feel like people are they have so much distraction and so much shit going on that yeah. they don't really they can't even. They're not common enough to form a hypothesis on how to solve problems or even if they have the hypothesis, they're not they're not in enough internal peace to accept it and actually do it. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Cause there's so much noise, right? So much noise. So, so yeah. So I, I think that, uh, first of all, anybody that's never read deep work, read that book. It's an yeah, amazing classic book, man. Uh, but yeah, deep work itself is, I think what I would want to emphasize about that. And, and I've had a lot of growth myself in deep work and even like really good business systems and business decisions, just being deep, deep in something like phone on airplane mode. I'm yeah. just here and work on this. One of the, yeah. Like we talked earlier, they said like driving with the mm-hmm. <laughs> driving with the radio, the radio off, off was one yeah. of the ways I used to get best ideas. But now I get most of my best ideas on the airplanes. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm alone, man. I, I've there's been some issues that I had to figure out, and I've you know I might book a trip that I don't have to take, but I'll take it anyway. Just mm-hmm. so I get those six hours on the airplane. It's something different about it, bro. You know, it's I actually different. super like airports. Really, I like I like the mayhem. It helps uh, me focus. You know what I like about it? I like watching people panic and being crazy, like and wait I, for and, flights and shit. Yeah, yeah, and I'm just like being real, like reckless emotionally, and and I stay calm amongst that. Even if I'm in the same mm-hmm. situation, I think I'm better than all. Yeah. <laughs> Psycho, <laughs> you motherfuckers cannot fuck yeah. with me. Yo, during COVID, when everybody was fucking laying freaking people out. off and yeah. freaking me off, I was. I told everybody, listen, I'm not laying off nobody. In fact, video editors, yeah. we don't need y'all. I'm still gonna pay. You. I still pay my fucking nanny. Stay home. Yeah. Don't even worry about it. Cause I'm better than all these other motherfuckers laying people off. <laughs> they can't fuck with me. <laughs> I 
love that, man. We flourish. <laughs> we flourish, man. I, some of the best years of my career was during the pandemic. Man, that shit was. was I'm, I'm waiting for the next one, man. I was hoping yeah. that the fucking monkeypox was gonna get it popping, yeah. man. But maybe these aliens will do it, bro. Man, you know, so God willing, they need to do something. Yeah. All right. Come on, pop some off. <laughs> what, what is right. I love the profile picture, but anyways, <laughs> <laughs> that guy's getting ready to fuck a cat. Yeah, 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 yeah he is. Lion, tiger, hunter, <laughs> twenty Canadian dollars. Work three jobs for a couple of years, save close two hundred k. What's next? I did it by living like a scrub. No clothes shopping, no luxury items. I've been a loser my entire twenties. I'm thirty one now. Also. Three times, uh, three x a day training works. This guy's a G. He's came up, man. I, don't, I it looks like he wasn't a loser in his twenties. You know what I'm saying? It looks like he he's focused and dedicated, and now he's got a war chest of capital to deploy against his goals. That's what I'm seeing. Yeah. How would you attack this, Justin? I would pay attention to to ways that I could create a system to make 200k again. Yeah. I'm real big on systems. I know he saved and he grinded for it. Uh, obviously the answer with that is to invest it in, in a vehicle that's going to mm-hmm. pay you on top of it. I wouldn't go do anything crazy with it. Clearly, maybe you can get into a real estate deal or, um, or place it, you know, in something that's really, really safe. And, and that's going to, you know, appreciate and value or give you some kind of dividend. But um, for me, it's always, it's never going to be about how I got to them. It, it's never going to be about the money, but how I got to it, because I put most of my energy in systems that, bring me money again and again and again and that's yeah. why i don't really count money as much as i do paying uh, attention to systems i think about yeah, I, that's yeah. a that's a fact because i i hate when people talk about net worth because it's like it's fine it's it's, right. it's, 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 it's it's a result but i think about cash flow baby me too you know what i'm saying cash flow is more important than net worth that's right because i can have a bunch of jewelry and that's technically my net worth right you yeah. know what I'm or you could win the lottery yeah. but if you have a business that's spitting you out that same money then you built a machine. Cash flow. Yeah. And it's I, about cash yeah, flow. And I like, yeah. And I like building machines, man, and keep that thing coming. Yeah. You know, I so. look at my monthly revenue. Yeah. Bro, from the businesses, the assets, but personal. Like, I I, I didn't show you my new sheet, the sheet for this year, because I track uh-huh. my actual income in my pocket from each income stream. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but that's and, that's like that game you were talking about earlier. I've done that. Mm -hmm. And what happens is, is you start to count it and then it becomes a game. It's a game, baby. And then you start trying to open that faucet up on each other. How I double this one. How do I do this? How do I do this? How do I do this? Yeah, yeah. 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 So he's got to switch his system up because now he grinded for two years at 200K. And great work. That's fantastic. That's what I did. Yeah. That's what I did. I had them four jobs. Exactly. And now you got to find, now you got to focus on creating a system. Where you can, where that money can be deployed in a way that it can make you more yeah, money. It can flow to you. Yeah, yeah. 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 Find a way to make a flow. And I mean, I'm, I ain't got nothing. To, I'm not trying to sell you nothing. I think you should like just do some reading, studying, buy courses. Like when I want to learn a new skill set, I'll buy like every course on it. I'll fucking um, read every book. You know what I'm saying? Know, I don't you know, I find that really funny because like if like self help and courses were such a big part of my life. Still are. I buy a course right now if I thought yeah. I could get better. And I still you know? go to events and shit. Yeah. You know what I'm like, I wonder yeah. if I could. And then I take like copious notes. Hold on. Do I have, I, I, don't, I wonder if I have one note on this computer. I'll show you something. In the meantime, do you want me to just uh, put some of the super chats up? Yeah, or? put another one while I look for this shit. All right. Thank you. Hein M, $5. $5. Shout out to my man, Justin Waller and King Kido. Got to respect dudes who's G's before YouTube, Miami 24 7. Thank you. And Thanks, then. Bro. Thank you, bro. We got Germ, 10 bucks. Big Love Germ. S- yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what it is. <laughs> Love to see you two together. Thank you for the free game. Mm-hmm. We got Hayden Mikoni, 10 bucks. Super sticker. Thank you for the support. I got this one. What's he talking about, man? Mr. G- Mr. Got Plenty. Mr. Mr. Got. Hi. <laughs> right. 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 Five bucks. When you were playing Alabama, did you go into the game believing you could beat them or did you figure out you could win while playing them? 
I think the longer that game went on, the more we believe we could possibly win it. But I'd love to give you some like motivational story about how we knew we had it. Now I had every intention of getting our ass whipped. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, let's keep it a hundred, bro. It's Nick Saban in Alabama. Fuck off. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. We could have played them a hundred more times. They'd beat the shit out of us. But hey, that day, you hey, know, man. sometimes you know what that game was about for me. They turned the ball over four times, and we had zero turnovers. We just didn't fuck ourselves. Didn't fuck up. Yeah, we just didn't. Sometimes, sometimes life is that way, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like it wasn't because we were super talented and we were yeah. faster than them. We just didn't fuck up. You know what, man? Yeah. I really feel like protecting the downside is, is a lot of times more important than bro. chasing the upside. Yeah, it can be because if you can just be kind of like because like most of life is a long game, right? Mm -hmm. So that that game, it was 14 14 at halftime, mm -hmm. but then. The third quarter came, and I think we scored a touchdown somewhere in there. We were up by seven mm -hmm. going in the fourth quarter, and it was like, it's not because we just beat them up. It's yeah. really just because we scored again, and the longer that shit went on, you can almost feel the, the psychology in it. Uh, like, it become, it, like, every minute that went by, it was like, almost they were like, bro, they might beat us. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And, the, then, the and then on our side, we were like, Bro, we might beat these motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and life can be that way sometimes, man. It's like sometimes it's not about doing anything but like showing up every day. Showing up. And just not fucking it up. Not fucking it up. Yeah. <laughs> you think about it, it's like you can. <laughs> what if a you, great if you just book have, title. Yeah. Just <laughs> not fuck fucking up. it up. <laughs> like me and Brandon got, writing a book. <laughs> like if you got a list of shit you got to do each yeah. day, just don't fuck it up. Yeah, just don't fuck it up. <laughs> Listen, you know? all you gotta do is stop fucking up. Yeah. That's it. Like, <laughs> it's not even that hard. Like, it's not, it's like nothing's really hard, like in a vacuum, really. Mm -hmm. Just don't fuck it up. Just don't fuck it yeah. up, man. And then you gotta look at what I do is fun, funny you say this, man. So I got this. I was telling this to Ryan Holiday. I was talking to him. I call it office offensive pessimism. Right. And yeah. I, I I told him he could put it in one of his book. I gave him permission. Yeah. I, I think he's just waiting. Yeah. But like the best book to put in, and like he just feel like th these books weren't worthy worthy of this yeah. yet. So he, I think he's just waiting. I think it's only been like five, six years. Anyway, <laughs> offensive pessimism is like I think about all the ways shit can go wrong mm -hmm. with 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 either something I'm trying to accomplish or something I got going on, and then I look, and then I, I think, okay, how do I prevent that to happen? At first, I think, could I handle it if that happened? Right, right. Like if that happened, could I handle it? If the answer is no, then maybe I don't even do it. Right, yeah. right. But if, but if it, okay, I could handle it. And then, how do I prevent that from happening? Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I got, I do like a, like a pre post mortem. Yeah. Like okay, what do I have to do? So how, how that would manifest itself is, you know, I'm always. You know, one of my old business partners, Brian, you know what I'm saying? That's my dog. But he used to always, man, you you take all these precautions or you, we had an event and I brought a bunch of, I brought like extra cameras and extra shit that we uh -huh. didn't need. I just thought, what well, if some shit goes wrong? He's like, man, you do this all the time. We bring all this extra shit. We don't even need it. I'm like, yo, <laughs> it's just like my, I have a fire extinguisher in the kitchen, but I don't fucking, I hope I never need it. Right. I don't plan on burning the kitchen down, right? right. You know what I'm saying? I wear the seatbelt. I don't plan on crashing this motherfucker. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's just, it, I'm just, I look at the downside mm -hmm. and then can I handle it? Okay, I could handle it. And then what do I do to prevent that? So I, I go I overboard yeah. to protect the downside in everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Does that make sense? Because sure. yeah, all you got to do you got to be able to take a hit when it comes, but if it if you get hit hard, right in life, it doesn't have to be a fucking tragedy, right? <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? But if you weren't prepared for it, maybe it knocks you out. And then That's you how I feel about game. layers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because really, like layers is like like when you brush block, mm -hmm. you you still gonna feel it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you had layers in between. Ah, uh, you're you know not gonna get knocked out. Yeah, you're not gonna. It's get the knocked same out. shit. Yeah. yeah. You know so, what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why you keep your fucking hands up. Yeah, right? like you know, you stay in that window frame. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but 
I mean, life is like that because it's like when I talk about like different streams of cash flow mm -hmm. and, I, and I talk about being impenetrable. Yeah. I want to be in a place where if one of those cash flow streams went away, my life wouldn't change. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think that that looking in the future in that way is also playing a downside risk offensively. Yeah. I'm offensively creating yeah. layers. Exactly. That if one of them get wrecked due to some kind of, you know, market circumstance or whatever, I don't really give a fuck. Yeah. Because I got layer on layer on layer on layer. My shit stacked. It's impenetrable. You take you take the precautions. Mm-hmm. In, initially, offensive, yeah. offensive pass. What can go wrong? All right, boom. Yeah. I take offense against that potential problem. Yeah. And even if it doesn't happen, maybe it costs me more money, me a right. little more time. Right. But it's like now I got a layer, I got layers of like I, I can't I can't lose. Yeah. I can't lose or I can't lose big. Right. You get what I'm right. saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I especially with big. risk, or like certain risk, you know. Yeah. Like I'll give you an example. Like I loan I there's this guy I loan money to on houses. Mm. And um I used to take the second lien. Like he would get a loan from the bank to buy the house, and then he he like I'd flip him like sixty or hundred grand to do the construction. Mm. And it got to a point where it's like I could keep doing that, but I'd rather just give him the whole three hundred, four hundred grand mm. because if something goes wrong, I don't want to be second place on the lien. Yeah. So yeah, I'm like, okay, well, what's my downside? Well, I pay the house up, but then I own the house. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then that way, no matter what. You good. I'm good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like those kind of, and that was an aggressive move because it's more money in. It's actually shoving more chips into the deal. But I have control of my outcome in that way. And my downside is not so bad because really owning the house is owning the fucking house, losing a hundred grand. And then the bank taking the house, I lost a hundred grand. Yeah. You know, and the other one, I can just play it out over time. Yeah. Hold it long enough, get rid of it later. So that, that, like you yeah. did the exact same thing. You, 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 what you, could happen? The worst, the worst thing happens. How can I be cool. offensive about it? Yeah. Yeah. It, yo, I, everything. Like when my, I, I won't let my friends borrow money. Like I, I give it to them. Uh, you know, <laughs> because yeah. think about the worst that can happen. They don't give it back. To and they're you. not going to. And then, most of the time. And then, and then, you lose a friend. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not even like they didn't want to give it back to you. Maybe who knows? Who knows what? Because life is fucking hard. Yeah. Yo, man. Yeah, it's hard to make money. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. if you can figure it out, then you gotta, you, 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 you blessed, but I don't want to risk losing a friend. Right. <laughs> so yeah, I, no, I completely it understand. You know yeah, I don't, I don't really do loans either. It's like, if you ask me to borrow money and I decide to give it to you, I don't expect it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know what I think happiness is the gap between expectation and reality. Yeah. And even that on a personal level, like the man you, you want to become, the man you think you should become. Yeah. It's your happiness is going to be how far you are from your yeah. expectation of who you should be. Yo. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's yeah. the formula of happiness. Same thing on the micro in that relationship is like our relationship is I expect that I'm never going to see this money again. And for that yeah. reason. So, I got no reason to be, you know, upset about anything because I wasn't expecting you to pay me back anyway. Yeah, so, yeah. and I feel better if I just give the money. Yeah, right? exactly. You know, obviously this, this is a threshold, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <I laughs> but know. it's like you know what I'm saying. And mm -hmm. I, I take it to another level. It's like oh, I got this this concept I call the reciprocity bank, right? You know, <laughs> and I'm always trying to do more for people in my life. Than they done for me, not not in a weird way. Just I want to have helped my friends and, mm -hmm. and family more than they helped me. You know, right. and it get it gets kind of hard with one of your friends are doing really good. You know, but it's yep. like, but it's not it's not to one up them or no shit like that. It's because if the shit really hits the fan. I'm gonna need my fucking boys, <laughs> and I want to be in a position. I want to be in a position where it's so set up. I got so much reciprocity built up over the years that they'd be excited to help me out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like an insurance policy <laughs> against mm -hmm. failure. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yeah, no, a thousand percent. And so there's that. I think the, you have that with your platform too, though, because you've been given for so many years. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I can, I can, I can, I can go. <laughs> yeah. I can go come up with something. It's got to yeah. be valuable too, right? Yeah. You know, but I don't know. I want to be in a position where I can hit you up and you like, all right, yeah, I got you. You know, yeah. whatever you need, yeah, you know. Yeah. And it's um, 
Yeah, I just look at that. I look at that all the time. And also, this is something that I don't think people do. But I try to help my friends make money, even if I, especially if I don't have nothing to do with it. Like, I don't even care. Number right. one way to make a friend is help them make money. Yeah, help them make number money. Okay, this, this, yeah. the, and we know the number two, right? Yeah, 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 <laughs> but yeah. like, but like you help them, you help them make money. But it's it's because I think like this. Um, Jay Jay Z had a line, a song called "Feeling It." He said, "If everybody in your clique is rich, your clique is rugged. No one can fall because everyone would be each other's crutches." Yeah. And I'm thinking, if okay, if I make my friend stronger, right. Then now my fortress is stronger because mm-hmm. we're all boys. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, so I want to see you win. I want to see you make more money. Even if I don't make no money off it, don't get it. Just because mm-hmm. now we're stronger. Right. You know and what no, I'm saying? No, yeah, a thousand like, percent, man. I, I completely resonate with what you're saying. It's like, I don't even like, I I made a clip I maybe late last year. And it, I think it has over a million views. And I said, I don't like to be friends with people I can't make money with. Mm, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not sorry about it because mm. if I really love you and care about you, I want to see you win and win big. I want to yeah. see you be a hero to your yeah. family, to your son, to all the people that follow you, to yourself. And I think that's what true friendship looks like, man. Like, if not, then what are we talking about, bro? Fantasy football? Get the yeah. fuck out of here. Well, you know, you I'm know? so focused that it's yeah. difficult for me to have friends that we don't have. Bro, I can't. You know what I'm saying? It's difficult. Just where where do I fit it in my calendar? I can't imagine, like, you know, not trying to make like even what we're doing right now. This is like we're just chilling, talking, right? But like, still, it's it's on a platform where like we're growing together. That that shit is very important to me, man. It's a fact. Um, I in fact, I don't want friends that I don't at least feel like I'm growing. Yeah, at you know least learning at, at least. Yeah, yeah like, learning. You don't have to make money, book, but we got to be learning. Got to do same. something. Yeah, yeah we got to be something. coming up. In, in a positive way, you're working on that man you're becoming, or just something. Yeah. So I really, I really believe that to be true as well, man. That's one thing I'd say about what you were saying earlier is like sometimes success for me is to give to somebody so much that I know there's no way they could ever pay me back. Yeah. Yeah. You know and hopefully saying? you never, yeah. and I'm never going to need it. Hopefully you never need it. And I then, and me. then it's a beautiful way to l- live life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause now you're going through helping everybody, right? Everybody. Hoping you never have to get a return. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the only way you ask, because you coming on here may be the only thing I've ever asked you for. <laughs> like, yeah. you know maybe. Saying? Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, but, but you know what I'm saying? Like, but man, it's like I didn't even I ask, ask you nobody to, come, to be I asked here. you to come on. Yeah. You know, and we did it, man. And like for me, that was like a full circle thing to have Brandon Carter on my on my oh, shit. Oh shit. But think about it, bro. Yeah. Cause I was watching your shit for all those years, and it was like Getting to the point where it was like your ass shows up late, but at least you had cigars. <laughs> I gave you the yeah, yeah, like, I promise it's worth it. And it was worth it. I smoked, <laughs> I smoked every I was one late because I was getting the cigars. I smoked every one of those. <laughs> and uh and but it was a very surreal moment for me because I watched your shit so much. Uh-huh. Uh, so it was like straight, it was like straight biggie. It was all a dream. You oh, know, it's like it was a come up thing for me. Yeah, man. It was really, it was really fun. And now awesome here. and now and now we fuck around and talk shit. And, and it's good, and I'm not surprised about that at all. But you know, sometimes you, you know, having strong allies make it where like you don't even have a fight a war, bro. You know, that's and, fact. and that's what I'm always looking for. Yeah, man. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. I don't, I don't need to be the biggest part of NATO. I just want to be a NATO. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I so, fact, I want my friends to be bigger than me and make more yeah. money than me because one, it gives me a goal to reach to, it inspires me. Right, I can't get complacent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When you know what I'm saying? When if Am- if Andrew's buying Bugattis, you just bought a Lambo. <laughs> like, well, imagine me pulling up in the Civic. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, I don't want to get left behind. I it ke- it. it keeps it, it, in a good way. Like, it, it keeps it, it pushes. You know what I'm saying? You know something I super enjoy about our friendship, or like my friendship with Andrew, or even like Myron or whoever. Mm-hmm. It's like I'll use you for example. People will message me and they're like, bro, you know Brandon Carter, you know King Keto. <laughs> I get the same shit with you. you know? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, but he's just Brandon to me. Yeah. You know, he's my friend. Like, hey, bro, you good? You know, like yeah. whatever's going on. It's like, that's what I think is really cool because I like when I hear about people to take us out of like, when I hear about people that every, a lot of people know, mm-hmm. but they have a true friendship and they're really close. Like people forget that 
people that other people know also have real they bonds. Have friends. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a really cool thing that, that I get a message on Facebook like, bro, you were hanging out with King Keto. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I was, bro. But like, hey, Brandon, what you doing? Like, you want to go to the game? Word. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And like that to me, it's like a really cool thing to have because when everybody else will be just freaking out just to talk to you, yeah. you know, or vice versa or whatever. So I think that's a really dope thing that, you know, we all get to have. It's, it's different. You got to you gotta have friends who are cool with that, won't have the ego thing, won't be jealous of shit. Because I, I remember we went to the game and like people were recognizing you. And I was like, man, oh, can we get a picture? And I was like, yeah, I'll take a picture for you. Yeah. I'm taking pictures. I was low-key <laughs> feeling so guilty about that shit, No, bro. that shit was funny to me. Yeah, like, I, I, yeah. I enjoyed that. Yeah. Like, you know what? I could tell it didn't bother you. Nah. I could tell it didn't bother I you. I asked him if I could take the picture. Yeah. You know um, <laughs> Yeah, man. And, and so and that's actually a good way to check and see if somebody's really secure with themselves, too. Yeah. It says a lot about you as a person. Like, you know who the fuck you are, bro. Yeah. You know, I feel the same way, bro. I'll take pictures for you all day, man. Yeah, man. Like, all happy good. to do it, man. Nah, y'all need, I, I set the fucking picture up, bro. <laughs> like, they got back, like, bro, move over, bro. I do yeah. that shit all the time. Dude, I constant, bro. I, I want to say that before Andrew lost his Instagram, I had like I personally took like three or four of his photos. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Andrew, bro, stay still. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Move that. Okay. Flex. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Because you, I mean, like you see the shot, man. You want your boy to have the shot. Come on, man. Listen, so, we, if we, we stronger together, so, but you want your boys, you got to have your boys winning. They yeah. have to win. Even if it's independent of you getting direct value, that's still part of your fortress. I always, I always say that shit. You know, you're talking about like some of your friends are going to make more money. Yeah. I would much rather be Scotty Pippen and win championships yeah. then be Kevin Garnett, bro. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? The star. Yeah. I'd rather be the best two player or the two player on the best team winning trophies than be and the number Charles one. Charles Barkley. Than Charles Barkley. You know what I'm saying? I'm winning shit. I, fucking you know? BJ Armstrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'd rather be on the, just yeah. be on the fucking Yeah, bro, team. I'll be Steve Kerr. I don't you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah I'm, try, I'm trying to like lift trophies, you know? You know what I'm saying? And you could be a great player on the wrong team and not win, mm -hmm. but you could be the star of that team. But it's it, it's it's it, it's in a vacuum. It's in a, it's in yeah. an echo chamber, yeah. man. You because you got to be like, on the right team to win. Yeah, the really real legacy. Win. You didn't win seventy two games, bro, come on, man, or whatever. So you know, bro, oh. speaking of which, bro, I think that's a good way to end yeah. this shit, man. I think it's, yeah. we got to get it. Do we? Was there any other ones you would do? Can we do rapid fires or no more? Uh, there were some quick ones. We just rapid but, fire. Yeah, I need some time and all. <laughs> Yeah, okay, this one. Joshua Simkins, five bucks. If you were 20 with no real overhead expenses, would you zero out your bank balance in your currently successful business model? Love you all. Zero out my bank balance. Um, I don't know if I understand the question, so we got to skip it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I just don't know if I understand the question. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. We got Aaron. Uh, I'm 22, student making... 1.3k online in 50 hour weeks living with my parents should i get out and rent for 500 or save the money it depends on the relationship Going with your parents man life. like if i i wish i envy you people who have the fucking opportunity to live with your parents i moved out when i was i got sent to way to military school when i was 14 and i never moved back in so like if you can stack money if you have a good relationship with if you got that kind of relationship where you can stack money why and not have to pay those kind of bills I think it's a beautiful thing. I envy everyone who's had that opportunity to, but it depends on the relationship. Yeah, I think. Yeah. And we also got Paul, Brandon, your dopamine breakdowns and addiction for real. That yo, that might have been the best video I ever made when, on the, when we broke real... down the dopamine shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I to watch that, man. Yo, it's it, it, it changed your perspective on things. Yeah. <laughs> and then we got another one. Thank you for your wisdom. Money is important. Choosing your friends, peers can change your life. How important is it and how do you choose right? Mm, choosing your friends and peers. You know, if for, for me, it was like a lot of people say, how do I get rid of the toxic people? How do I stop doing it? For me, it was just like a, it became like a crowd out. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't I wasn't doing the shit that they was doing. So I just wasn't around yeah. them. And I started making I started moving on a different path. And then. Some of them wanted to be more like me. You know what I'm saying? They said, hey, man, how do I get like what you're doing? Like, like it was like Brian. Like, he wasn't like a fucking dickhead, right? But he was, he saw the path I was on. He's like, shit, I want to I want to do some of that I shit. And now that. he's a better person. He's still, we still boys. He's head of my sales team. I paid him $300,000 last year. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you yeah, know what I'm saying? And his, right. his rent is like 500 The rent control place in, 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 uh, 
a place in New York. I almost give this shit out. But like um, 500 a, a fucking a month, making $300,000 a year. He, so he invests almost all of it. He don't like buy, he's not on the internet. He don't buy shit like we do. He's got a girlfriend. You know what I'm saying? So he, he invests that shit. He's balling. I love that. Yeah, that's my. That shit makes me happy. That's my. That's my best friend. Yo, um, listen, Justin. What's up, G? Where can the people find out more about you? Yeah. Where should they go? Yeah, so you can go on Instagram, Jay Waller. You mm-hmm. can find me on Instagram, Justin Win Waller Seven, mm-hmm. and Twitter, Waller Seven J. Also have a daily uh, Telegram. Uh, Jay Waller Daily on Telegram. So where I put some stuff I don't even really put on the internet that much. Like last night I hit, I think one twenty two in the Lambo, driving one handed on, like an idiot. Uh, I dropped that. It's in like the close time. friends. It's like the close yeah. friends for for the fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's stuff I don't really talk about, uh, or just extra stuff, extra stuff that you wouldn't see. So like I'll make selfie videos at my house and shit, just shouting them out, tell them I appreciate them. You know, just what I'm going through. That's so what's it's good. Up. Yeah, it's cool. That's what's up. Listen, man, Justin, it's been a pleasure. Again, guys, make sure you uh, go to Discord. Join the Discord. We got free game in there, a bunch of free courses, and there's a, there's a whole. You're trying to make more friends, people who are balling. Like that Discord is full of people who, who are only there to build their muscle, muscle and mindset. We in there every day. I'm in there every day. Um, don't fall. There's some fake ones in there. We have to kick out every day, <laughs> but you'll know it's the real me because it's like got the shit, you know. Uh, and doubt baller mindset course. It's free, man. It's l- literally. The best shit I put out in a long time, man. Like it might be the best shit I ever put out, and it's free, and it's better than almost any everybody's paid course. It's like some real, really good content for those of y'all who are serious about the acquisition of capital. Anyway, all right, I'll let y'all. <laughs>